This college basketball picks and WAC SWAC MIAC AAC and Big West Conference Tournament Edition of the Sports Gaming Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K U T T dot com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick em for a chance to win 100x. In NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also ready by Champs. Run your own March Madness pool and enter Champs free bracket contest for a chance to win 1000 bucks. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs to enter today. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month. And start making smarter bets today. This is Jerry Glanville, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. The sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking that money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Can't wait to get my Drew Lock jersey, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan had a serious moment uh, before the show started. He said, "You know, I was telling myself I wasn't going to get all hyped up. I wasn't going to completely buy in, and then they go out inside Drew Lock." I'm all in. Ryan also throwing out a prediction off the air that the Giants are going to be the ones trading up for Caleb Williams. Oh my God! I think they could be trading up. I told you earlier. We we've discussed the markets a lot, but I told you earlier I would take defensive linemen off the board. I would make offensive line a massive long shot. I would still keep offensive line long shot of the it, a long shot for first round pick. Reasonable uh, first pick, first player drafted. I would still put receiver in the realm of possibility somewhere in the maybe three to one range, but quarterback first pick very much the favorite right now. See, I, I, I guess now I, I think it's certainly possible. They draft a quarterback in the first round, but to me, you sign drew lock because Hey, you think Daniel Jones might actually be ready for training camp. You need another guy. Uh, you need another non-franchise quarterback and drew lock fits that build. I, I to me, signing drew lock. I don't know why you would sign Drew Locke, have Daniel Jones, and then draft a first round quarterback. That seems like too many quarterbacks, right? Is that is five that- million dollars one? Like it, it's a cheap enough contract. That's exactly what the, what it's messaging. Two, you forgot Tommy DeVito. He still is on the roster. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, I I think I like I told you, like I've been saying all along. Uh, I'm not whistling a new tune uh, here in in March. I've been saying they're going to sign a guy. They're gonna draft a guy. Yeah. So step one has happened. I, I also th- told you they could be going after some top level edge or cornerback depth or talent. And they did that. They went after Brian. They they by the way, if your team hasn't picked up the phone and called the Panthers, they're not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> this like clear just call them. See what they'll do. Just see what happens. Yeah, I mean just, it- just call them. Just see what happens. Maybe you'll get a pick. They seem desperate for third, second, third round picks. Maybe you could flee. I don't think they have much left. What do you think they would trade Bryce Young for right now? Second rounder? No, oh, man. <laughs> if you could get anything uh, for Bryce Young, I, I think you would consider uh, it a Justin, win. Justin Fields for Bryce Young. Who says no? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty pretty hilarious. Justin Fields. We'll see where he ends up. I still think the uh, dark horse of Denver Broncos. Could be a fun landing spot for Justin Fields. And sir, I, I don't. I think they took the markets off, but I, I think Denver still needs a quarterback, and I, mm. I think they could talk themselves into Justin Fields. Jared Stidham. Remember how quickly they signed him last year? They did it's like a two-year him. plan, Sean. We'll see. Uh, chat firing away. Shout out to John. Mm. Uh, first time listening live. Also joined Patreon. Let's go. Been killing it. The attorneys with the info. Thanks. Yeah, not a great uh, past couple of days for me with the locks, but did hit. Montana State on the money line. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Joining us uh, in a second here to talk 
college basketball locks pick Dundee. But before we get to that, of course, shout out to Cut. I've been uh, slicing and dicing Ryan over on Cut. Got on a heater, then cooled off a little bit. And that's the if you lose money, at least you say like, oh hey, look at this, look at this guy with this funky goatee. All right, he probably needs a uh, couple of my bucks. All right, feel a little better. It's like spending at the farmers market versus at the uh, Walmart, you know? Yeah, yeah. At least you, it's a small town visit. Oh, I, I mean, like when we go hang out at the Circa Ryan, when I lose my money, at least I know. All right, Derek's gonna be able to buy himself a couple more cocktails. You know, it's going to a good place. And you have that feeling with Cut. It's if there could be a small town, a folksy sports gambling app. I think cut nailed it. It's the ultimate put your money where your mouth is platform. Love cut. Love the custom bets. I'm we did put a custom buzzer beater bet uh, out there. I'm not going to give you an updated count, but uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. I don't want to jinx it, but again, get it on there, send in some custom bets and get better prices. Uh, K U T T.com promo code S G P N for that 10% deposit bonus. Let's get it. Joining us on the line from the college basketball experience, the one and only Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? Good day, mate. Good day, mate. Indeed, a lot going on. Uh, Ryan uh, left uh, the office to uh, go uh, pick up his truck, and then he, he he left me on a cliffhanger. Said, "Oh my oh. God, what a story." I'll have to save it for well, the podcast because I, I was initially thinking how what a great transition John's comment was to the the hard conversation we have to have with Colby oh. uh, about about Kansas basketball. I don't know if we want to do that first. Yeah, I mean he's uh, completely in the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't, what is this? What is this nonsense about these injuries, Colby? How how are we not informed? Now, when, someone reached out via Twitter and said, "Does Colby still like Kansas? What was he doing picking Kansas?" Now, I would say not both <laughs> injuries were out there, but we did throw out yeah. when we were t- t- picking Kansas uh, to win the Big Twelve. I did say, are we worried that they're going to sit uh, sit Hunter Dickinson and save him for the real tournament? We did have that discussion. Yep. Now he wasn't ruled out until uh, later on, but uh, care to comment? Well, that's not the that's that, that's not the real important one. The important okay. one's McCuller. I mean, that Dickinson is a high, a highly paid guy, and obviously, you know, he's a starter. But he's to throbbing. me, yeah, McCuller, and then to rule them out for the whole entire tournament, I, I thought he might miss one. I thought Dickinson might miss one game. For the, for Bill Self to then say they're not playing for the whole tournament, you're like, oh, well, okay. We didn't <laughs> know that information well, at the time. This is, but this is some new. This is some new stuff here. So. What if other teams start catching on to this? You're you're Kansas. You don't actually need to win your conference tournament. I mean, yeah. Are, you, you are, still is play. it going to be like? Is it going to be? Are we worried we're going to have bowl like situations of the conference Greenies. tournaments in the future where teams that don't need to play aren't playing for anything are going to start opting out? Sure. And guys like I mean, guys like me uh, are, are going to get some run. Can uh, I solve that problem for sure. everyone? Uh, we have all these sponsors. We have conference tournaments being played in these strange arenas all over the country. We're going to get to a couple uh, later in the episode. Just have a cash prize for the winning team. Oh, hell yeah. Each player gets a piece of it. Done. Well, and and yeah. with NIL right now, how do we not have Jersey Mike's and then, you know, you get Danny DeVito out there with a giant bag of Jersey Mike's cash <laughs> and then he just lets it rain down on the players whoever wins like why not? Why not throw in some He's cash got a, prizes? A meat slicing uh, money gun. Well, uh, for the bowl <laughs> games, we would always break down like the bowl prizes yeah. of like, oh, these kids get a blow dryer and a pair of uh, goggles and some weightlifting gloves. Give them what they want. Give them cash. Uh, I, I think adding a cash prize would be awesome. I mean, imagine, imagine your Wagner. Shout out to Wagner. A huge moment for the Stat Rat community of Staten Island. Uh, drunk as I've ever been. Uh, probably, uh, I mean, I threw up on that Staten Island ferry so much. Uh, it was a good time back in the day. Shout out to <laughs> Wagner for getting it done, partying in the dorms of Wagner. Colby, they only Ima- s- imagine if they threw in a cash prize for these kids. Yeah. You got to be so pumped. I, I that does solve the problem. Yeah, but yeah. So, but anyway, the, the I think really what happened was the listener reached out because they were concerned. That you weren't all the way <laughs> dialed in on the Big Twelve injury situation. Oh no! Well, you got to remember, we—he's listening to this today, so it's like that shit's been out there for a, a little bit. 
Um, well, but but then here's what happened. Some of Colby's people reached out and told me, responded <laughs> to me and told me I needed to listen to Colby's nightly show. That's what yeah, he because I faded Kansas. To- <laughs> I faded Kansas there, so no, I'm out on Kansas. Yeah. That's when he, he, this guy had the nerve to tell me that's when Colby <laughs> gets his news. You should listen to that show. <laughs> he did, I think he called Ryan a fucking casual. Uh, I'm, 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 he did. And I'm starting to get worried that we're going to have one of these, like uh, Colby's going to sec- secure some land in Oregon situations. <laughs> and a bunch, gonna be a compact. bunch of people are going to start erecting buildings for him. Yes. Raising buildings as they say. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, that news was out there. Go listen to the college basketball experience. Did you guys catch uh, Mr. Saban at the? Uh, oh man, that was that was oh all time. God. Well, now that players are getting money, it's like, dude, come on. How can you? That's say what I'm this saying. And he face? uses How- this thing about his wife when they meet with the team. They'd have the recruits over for dinner, and all of a sudden, his wife comes to him and says, "Honey, they're asking for money. We should get <laughs> out of this world." What? Like the amount. Oh man, I knew he sold ca- Cadillacs at dealerships there. I know Nick Saban Cadillac dealerships are all through uh, Alabama and Florida, but holy shit, the used car salesman came out today. Uh, just th- also, I, I, Congress, that was- Congress, what are you doing? Why are you talking to Nick Saban? I, I mean, yeah. What what are we doing here? We they were paying players. Now they're playing paying them above board. Let's move on with our life. It's just such a funny story though that he's saying that we need the reason why I got out of this. He's like the reason why I got out of this was that players were about money, and it's like, oh my god, Nick Saban's telling us this. LSU yeah. and Alabama are your institutions well, that were buying and, every damn player. And Nick it, Saban it, worked for free, right? I mean, I assume he didn't get compensated <laughs> for those championships. Well, he was he was being paid <laughs> for developing these young men. Yeah, he was paid via but scholarship, right? They just gave him he, credits to the university no, no, no. Yeah. or get a degree. His job was to develop the players over those four years. Impossible for him to do his job over only one. Yeah. I'll say this. Uh, I'll say this. We haven't had a funny comedy movie in like a decade. That was absolutely hilarious today. That was the best <laughs> shit to laugh at in a while. I think. Uh, I think some of what he's saying is accurate. It is. It. it it's hard to build a, a team and a culture when the team is changing every year. Like the movement, I, I agree with. But in general, yeah, it is. Like you're also like Nick Saban. You're. You literally showed your hand by leaving. Like that's that. that uh, I mean, is. there's just so many accounts of it. LSU and what? Alabama have. I mean, they just. Oh no no! I know. I'm just for decades. Yeah, they've been cheating, yeah. but they've been able Pre-saving. to keep the team together. But sa- yeah. I'm just saying, some of what Saban's accurate in the sense that these players moving from team to team every year are obviously not going to develop as well. I do think there is some truth to that. Chasing playing time versus actually developing as a player. Is going to be the 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 byproduct, like yeah, but no, dude, I, will be I, in college I'm, for seven years, so it works out, I guess. But I'm just saying the funny part of like now it's about money. It's always been about money. All right, you can go back to the 1940s where they flew planes over over uh, University of Texas for flying planes over recruits uh, houses, farms, and dropping bags yeah, of but cash. That, but but yeah. Colby, those cash conversations didn't happen on Sunday at the dinner with Mrs. Sabe. And that happened at the church. She, she, she wasn't around Dude, for him those putting it there. was so used car sales. It's like when we, and then Mrs. Sabe, she's making her dinner. She's saying the recruits are asking for cash. It's like, Oh, Oh my fucking God. Shut the fuck up. You are so full of it. I mean, they I, also it, like it, it also makes, yeah, they come off like horrible slave owner owning racist. Ryan, are you going to share your story? Yeah, I mean, I was play, play the real men at DJ because honestly, okay. I do want to honor this. Uh, although I will, I will say he did ask to remain anonymous. <laughs> All right. So for whatever reason, SGPN presents Real Men of DJ. Real Men of DJ. We salute you, Jorge. Definitely not George. Jorge. Uh, had a bit of a crisis, Sean. Uh, the car got serviced. That wasn't the crisis. Everything's healthy with the Tacoma. Don't worry. Go to pick up the car. The, the nice valet kid goes off to get the car, comes back a little panicked. Sorry, sir. Some, nothing wrong. Just got to get your key. Brings over the, the veteran old grizzled black guy who uh, manages that department at the, the dealership. And he's they go off. They start looking. It's now a two man hunt. <laughs> they come back and you can tell the black dudes are irritated. Someone didn't do something correct. 
and I hear some yelling uh, with this, the like the 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 service people. Now we got two service people, so now there's a four person manhunt for my keys. <laughs> I have at this point acquired the information <laughs> that they cannot find my keys. Oh and my god! So I, well, at this point, I'm like, normally I can see my truck, and I can't see it, and they're telling me a guy moved it, and I'm like, holy shit, did someone just steal my truck from this? I so I walk around, I find my truck. I, I look at him like, all right, whatever. Go, I go stand. I'm trying to be patient because I get it. Like the uh, dumb people doing stuff on the on the clock. Uh, never heard of that before, Sean. Uh, employees uh, disappointing <laughs> you in some way. Money. Never heard of that, Sean. So uh, anyway, long story short. Next thing you know, th they, there's like three mechanics, four sales guys. Like the whole fucking place <laughs> is looking for my keys. There's a full panic going on. And uh, this short guy, uh, I, I don't want to say he looked like a DJ, but it definitely seemed like he was the kind of guy that had a Costanza wallet that was thick because he had paper tickets in it. He comes up to me, he goes, he goes, are you Ryan Kramer? And I go, yes. I'm like thinking like, oh, he must have my keys. He goes, love the podcast. <laughs> really? And I go, what, what's uh, yeah. You know, I, I do the normal, like, you know, how'd you get into the show? Uh, and I'm, he's like, what's going on? I'm like, it seems like you guys lost my keys. He's like, let me, let me see if we can get this sorted out for you. So long story short, uh, our man, our hero, our, our real man of DJ, uh, he, he hops in my truck, pulls down the fucking visor oh and my the keys. Pop it was out. right there. I, How do you not look there? And you could tell there are 12 people standing around the truck going, you gotta be fucking kidding. <laughs> like, so, so oh, that was like when I, I did it, my wife was looking for AirPods for two fucking weeks uh, that, that had the air tags on them Oh no! and the air tag batteries died or no, it was her keys. It, it, the key, it had air tags tied to it. She's like, Oh yeah, the air tags. The I kept getting this low battery thing. I'm like, and you didn't replace the battery? Like, no. I'm like, well, now we can't find the keys. You need the battery and the air tag to find the keys. Oh. I'm doing like hard resets. I'm on an air tag message board, and <laughs> spent days <laughs> trying to figure this thing out because I'm like, there has to be some way to go back and see the last time this air tag <laughs> pinged. What was its location? I'm like, you know, ready to like get in some hard coding. And then uh, she goes, you wouldn't believe it. They were in my purse the entire time, her purse, the entire time. Like what the just fucking lost uh, it. There are times where I, I, I swear, <laughs> I swear they're like the, boom, well, Alice to the moon. Uh, yeah. To the moon. All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're going to get to the games. Of course, uh, sign up for our bracket contest yes. uh, with champs sports game and podcast.com slash champs. You get one free entry for a chance to win a thousand dollars. And if you host your own pool, over at sports podcast.com slash champs. Uh, much like uh, Lehigh could be uh, coming up tomorrow night, sports gambling podcast.com slash champs. You host your pool there uh, for free. You get two free entries. Or if you just want to be soft and get the one free entry, why would you not take two free entries at a chance to win a thousand bucks? Sports gambling podcast.com slash champs. I, I did want to uh, note. That uh, our anonymous uh, mechanic Jorge did say that um, as a cowboy fan, <laughs> Dak Prescott fucking sucks. Ah, oh, that's great. That, I think that was our why Cowboys he wanted to fans stay anonymous. Listeners are some of my favorite because the fact that you could listen to our show where he just shit on the Cowboys yeah. the entire time <laughs> and still be like, yeah, I like these guys. Uh, those are those are real G's. I honestly, if we did a survey. Outside of the the obvious like gambling hubs, the slash the Northeast Chicago, I I I'd be surprised. The Cowboys could be the the highest per capita fan mm. per capita fan. It does seem to have a little bit of like they, I think they enjoy us saying the things that they deep <laughs> deeply and darkly think about their team. All right, yeah. All right, Colby, you ready to talk some college basketball? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just catching my future of uh, hopefully the Montana Grizzlies can uh, get this dub and set up a brawl of the wild oh, big sky championship. Keep, yeah, keep us uh, keep us updated. I was riding the hometown uh, Iowa State. Uh, were they the Bengals? Uh, Do you know Idaho State is one in twenty seven in their last twenty eight meetings against Montana? 
No, I mean, yeah, it's uh, you know, a great, great story. All right, let's uh, let's head over to. So we're finally caught up in the time machine. For those who have been with us uh, for the last couple of days, we're talking about uh, March thirteenth, Wednesday, starting early. Uh, and sh- shout out to the uh, the A ten there. There was absolute energy in that building. Um, I don't know if it was just the the announcing crew being awesome or the, the games, but. A ten ball had some juice this morning on Tuesday, so looking forward uh, to the follow through here. Eight thirty a.m. on the West Coast, Sean. That's that's perfect. That oh. is that is. We're, now we're starting to get warmed up for next week. Coffee and March uh, Madness. Sweat. This is when we got to get the body clocks getting ready. We got we are going to be watching one game of basketball. So single screen it for the first thirty minutes, but you'll be fine. St. Joe's. George Mason again. We're in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. George Mason, and these are these are numbers that are out there. George Mason laying a point. Colby. Um. Well, you know, uh, St. Joe's won seventy-five, seventy-three back on January thirty-first in a barn burner. I think that was at the buzzer, if memory serves me correct. Um. I think Mason gets revenge here. Mason's the better defensive team. Tony Skin, the former George Mason Patriot uh, player himself, who took Mason to the Final Four, is having an unbelievable first season there. Twenty wins. They haven't had twenty wins since two thousand eleven, so he's already accomplished that. Looking for their twenty-first win. They're the better defensive team. Now St. Joe's is a, is a uh, they can when they get hot they can be a factor, but I think the fact that Tony Skin, even when he was a player, but the the style of defense that they they run at George Mason can be a real X factor in this game. I will take George Mason. I do expect this to come down to the final minute of the game, so I'll take Mason uh, to get it done. They've been the to me they've been just the more consistent team all year long. Uh, so I have a little more faith in the Patriots than I do say St. Joe's, who've been all over the place all year. I mean they have games where they look really good, but they have games where they look really bad. And I so think the more cons- <clears throat> what's that. No, I was just gonna say, shout out to uh, St. Joe's. First uh, place I ever got a fake ID was nice. a St. Joe's college student ID. Oh, uh, no, yeah. So got a got a St. Joe's college ID. I thought you were gonna me. say you bought it on the campus. No, St. Joe's. And no, it, was- it said I went to St. Joe's <laughs> and it had my date of birth and it was just a laminated like <laughs> piece of paper uh, and it got me into some bars because I don't think a lot of people cared back in the day. I'm with no, Colby. They did not. Uh, George Mason, a little more stable program, a couple of quality wins they got, but really I, I like their defense. You look at some of the advanced metrics. I'm with you, Colby, like their defense, uh, 11th in the nation in two point percentage defense, two point shots. I, I think that could be all you need. This should be a close game, but um, I'm going to go with the better defense. Give me George Mason. Yeah, St. Joe's like lives and dies by the three. That's why they lost a game to Texas A&M Commerce earlier this year, who's a horrible team uh, in the Southland. Um, I just think you're 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 safer with George Mason because they've they've shown up game in game out, playing a little better than uh, say say the the Hawks there. And just a reminder for everyone, I do have futures on both these teams. Uh, uh, your, for all the people tracking Ryan's futures, uh, well, I, so for me, it's like yeah, if I'm going to double down my position, I almost, I, I'll, I'll disagree with you. I'll take, uh, I'll take St. Joe's because I do think they live and die by the three. You're right, and that's kind of the weakness of the Mason defense. That and is, so. that is a point of concern. But I, I'm still with Colby. I think this is a decent spot for George Mason. Decent matchup. Let's go, Mason Sean, jars. Come Sean's, on, Sean's fade in Philly. I think Mason's a little more athletic. I think they're a little more athletic than St. Joe's. I think that could be a, a factor. Boy, um, and and that, also, that, what's that? Did that did that not pop out in that Davidson game towards the end? But all of a sudden, oh. it looked like oh, he roll rolled the ball out on the court, and you got some fucking private school pussies and a yeah. bunch of kids from the neighborhood. And, and George Mason, w- w- after this win, I got I heard rumblings that they're going to start their football program. Go buy that nice. T-shirt. Let's go. Yeah. That thing is flying off the shelf. Flying Use that promo code madness. 15% off everything in the merch store. Even the George Mason football shirt. If you can find it, uh, the zoo baz like pants are available. Can't wait to get some of those. Oh yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about my Hokies. We're heading to DC where the ACC remember, strangely decided to play their uh, conference tournament. 9 AM on the West coast, Florida state. Virginia Tech, 
the fighting Mike Young's laying three away from Castle Coliseum. I'm assuming you're going to tell me that's you. You should you should not be uh, doing that under any circumstances. No, I actually think I lean Virginia Tech here. Florida State is much like Miami, and and I'm super pissed at moneyline Mac and NC Nick for <laughs> swaying me to take Miami today. After you know, I was like, <laughs> that I, was a I, bad I, play. I already dude. ripped up Miami future. I well, and hear me out. My angle was if any team could use a hard reset, it's a talented team like Miami with uh with a good head coach now. Certainly, they were ninety to one for a reason, and you saw that shit continue against BC. I'm sorry, did I hear Colby say he was swayed to take Miami? Because on <laughs> well, our it, show, it, he took BC. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing the t- oh, the wow. college experience what? show last night. Yeah. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know why? Do you know why? I'm doing the college experience show last night. I take BC on the show. And then they bring up Larinaga playing in, in uh, you know, in DC where he, he went to the final four, right. Uh. In, in that sp- specific stadium. And then the fact that Miami rested their starters down the stretch. And I said, huh, I never, th- I didn't realize that because I wasn't paying attention to Miami because they're fucking ass. Right. And I was like, so maybe they were just sitting their starters for the ACC tournament. And maybe that's diluting my numbers on thinking that. So then I was like, all right, you know what? You guys, you guys switch my, my, my pick. Give me uh give me Miami. And I look, I never want to take Boston college and athletics. Um, so uh, I was swayed <laughs> to take Miami. Now, wow. after watching the game today, I was completely right before those bastards talked to me and uh, <laughs> you got to we won it. the revolutionary war. I was completely right. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> super frustrating because Florida state uh, to tie it back to this, the game I did watch, which was a couple games ago, was Miami, Florida State, and it looked like no one wanted to win that game. It looked like yeah. no one cared to be there. That's why I can't take Florida State in this matchup, is because Virginia Tech is a senior ridden team. Now they don't have they definitely lack athleticism, so they're definitely the Davidson in this matchup. Uh, but I, I'm just gonna trust that they want to be there and they want to win. With Mike Young squad, I will lay the points with the Hokies. I mean, it's Hunter Couture's final, final, final season. I think. Yeah. So I mean, they got to they got to run one out for him. And they'll I, have I, the crowd. They'll have the crowd a little bit. It, oh, one hundred. The best thing about this this being in D.C. is that D.C. is Hokie country. I, mean, I don't know if there's another college in that area that's going to have the crowd outside of a home team. So yeah, I mean, Virginia tech, they also, they're a good matchup. Sean, you love free throw uh, percentages. I know very good at the line. Uh, very good in conference. They're, number one in the ACC at creating turnovers on defense. That could be, uh, or sorry, that's Florida state. Uh, never mind. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I, maybe I should take uh, Florida state here. If you want, Sean, I'm doing the show later. You can come on our show and take the yeah, opposite I'll take, team. I'll take, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take for this show. I'll take Virginia Tech, but maybe I'll hop on Colby's show and uh, give out Florida State. There you go. Then you might. Then you you can, can say you gained some new intel that the Florida you can State be right. But then yeah. you can be right, or you 100 percent of the time you can be right or wrong. I no. need a pulse check. Oh wait, and we have the. <laughs> We have the wanted for treason, you know. Uh, Kramer, back in my day, treason was a hangable offense. Yeah. Golby, as a guy who claims he's old school, you know, a lot of treacherous activity here. And what's up with that uh, weird throbbing <laughs> dick near his mouth? This, what, what year? What, what year was this taken? I don't understand. Is that a horse? Uh-huh. Uh, that's a great. Shout yeah. out! Shout out to you guys for uh, working that one up. The untold story of uh, Benedict Dan. I got to get a pulse check. How excited are you about Virginia Tech, Ryan? Because that that really will sway my pick here. Uh, well, I will. I I'm very excited uh, because this is the kind of team that goes on a little bit of a run. Okay, I I feel okay with Virginia Tech. Ryan's not really that enthusiastic. I uh, mean, how can I, I, on a scale, I mean, if Drew Locke was a ten, that was like a three. <laughs> Drew Locke in excitement, and that's actually good for you, Ryan, because when your yeah. when your excitement gets high for these tech programs, oh, no, I can't that's right when now. the lay the letdown starts. The, I don't the logic is here, Sean. The, I'm the, handicapping the, the handicappers. They're a much better offensive team than than Florida State. They're 78th in offensive rating. Uh, Florida State's at 198. 
and they're both right around the same level defensively. So go with the better offensive team. They're also, like I said, there's more veterans on this team and Sean, for your credit, they're sixth in the nation and free throw percentage are the Hokies Florida state 259th. I don't have uh, Sean, you know, I don't, I don't communicate with a lot of people. Uh, I know a, a number of people that are going to be in attendance for this really stra- strangely early. I'm telling uh, Colby nailed it up top saying that he, they're going to have the crowd that whatever people are in the building for this game are going to be rooting for the Hokies. <laughs> so uh, yeah, lay it, lay it. Let's go. Uh, let's go Hokies. Uh, come let's on. Let's go. Hokies. I, I, I only have so much Hokie juice uh, and it's all, uh, all from my man, coach pry right now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm the, doing some squats, lifting some weights, rah, getting ready for the season. I was explaining. I'm a man's head. Come should, at me. I'm 40. So I've been. He's give, like a a poor man's Dan Campbell. I've been uh, giving the family updates on the free agent signings. Oh yeah. Just uh, just to let them know what's going. My on. wife was bummed out when the Eagles didn't resign DeAndre Swift because she has a Swift jersey because she's also a Taylor Swift fan. Oh, Taylor Swift's an Eagles damn. fan. It kind of worked out. So I told her she has to burn the jersey. She's not that excited about that. I go FYI, Saquon Barkley is now on the Eagles. He is dead to us. Um, shocking response. And then I send this video of what he posted to his Instagram, and the the basically the the unanimous response is, oh, he looks pretty good in green. What the fuck? Like, what is this shit? You know, you know, Mark Bavaro played for the Eagles too. You, did. you didn't have the same yep. take on him. I, honestly, my take on Saquon is that he. Um, he, 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 he so much became the villain that he united giants fans to loving Tiki Barber again. That's, that's how amazingly like I, that can't be possible. I, that I I'm shocked. I, I can't, I can't, but I did hear the uh, giants are interested in Boston Scott, which would just oh, be, be hilarious. Be nice trade. Uh, hilarious <laughs> that well, and may, and maybe the, Gi- the giants probably think like Boston Scott's uh First ballot Hall of Famer because he just fucking dominated them every time they played. <laughs> I will. I, like, oh, we got to get this Wilson <laughs> Scott guy. He's unstoppable. Yes. No. I, I I am excited to see how Saquon does with with Philly. He he was it's a good offensive. His, line his one off field weakness was his extreme sensitivity to what people say about him. All right. Discord gets Florida State. Moving along to UCF. Who looked amazing? Great pick uh, going against them, Colby. Or maybe you didn't go against them. Uh, no, I did. I did go. I did go against them. And that eighteen to two run to start the second half was all Not the good. difference. Yeah, they're taking on BYU out in Kansas City. BYU laying five and a half here. I, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm gravitating uh, always towards the favorites. But what happens is I watch these conference tournaments, and of course the bad teams play early. Yeah, you watch the bad teams play and win, and you're like, "Fuck yeah, I want to bet on this team." It's again. hard not to get sucked in. UCF is. I mean, I was like, "All right, I can I can talk myself into this UCF team going on a little run here. They're they're interesting. They're they're well, uh, they're, they're athletic." Well, Colby, what do you think of? Um, I'd like your take on BYU in a neutral because I always I, I felt like I won a lot of money this year taking BYU at home. Uh, I feel like I don't I didn't play them a ton on the road. What do you like? How much of that is their home court, the elevation, what they got going there? How much of that is going to travel here uh, for this conference tournament in Kansas City, Missouri? Well, I, I'm fascinated by seeing this myself because you know when when BYU was in a conference tournament where there's WCC or Mountain West, uh, or even the WAC, I think back in the day, all of that was Vegas. And there's a big Mormon population there. So you would get a very BYU crowd. Can't, are they, they're just dedicated fans, though. So I could see them spending money to go to Kansas City. I could see them doing that. Um, but Convert some their home in edge, Kansas City as well, kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, go on there you go. a little mission. And, but I'll say this, man. As far as like, I didn't really fear. And uh, like, if you go back and listen to our Big Twelve preview, I didn't have BYU as high as they finished, but I still was high, was bullish on them compared to the the Associated Press. Like most people thought that that uh, BYU would suck in the Big Twelve, and I was like, man, their home edge is too good. They have one of the best home edges. If anything, believe it or not, guys, they were worse last year in the WCC. Finished sixth. They finished fifth in the Big Twelve this year. So once again. Kind of, kind of making the Big Twelve look a little suspect there, but I, I, I'm going to take BYU minus the five and a half here. 
uh, with, with some expectancy that they have some fans show up. And then also just the fact that uh, if you watch that first game, they beat UCF by two, but they were really up by like 10 with like a minute left. Um, I I'm just think they're, they're a I better got some team. Mormon stats if you want them. Oh, uh, sure. But I, yeah, I, I, I like, I like BYU. I mean, again, 12th uh, offense adjusted efficiency in the nation. I think that's, I mean, how can you go against them right now? Uh, UCF um, offense is okay nationally, but if you look just in conference, they're 14th in offensive efficiency. So they really struggle in conference offensive offensively. Um, and BYU, man, number one in the conference, uh, two point shot. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm taking BYU. Kramer, There's, update us on the Mormon well, community. Right, so obviously Utah is the the number one uh, place for Mormons. Uh, over two million people and fifty over fifty three hundred churches. Oh my God! California second, Idaho third, Arizona fourth, Texas Texas shockingly fifth, Washington sixth, Nevada as Colby's been telling us is seventh. Uh, for reference, I said fifty three hundred churches in Utah. There are only uh, three hundred sixty two in Nevada. We scroll down a little bit further. Missouri number fifteen in the same realm of Hawaii. They have one hundred fifty nine churches, so it's not nothing, Colby. But I, I think to your point, probably not the uh, same edge. Uh, but you know, like you said, they're a traveling people. Perhaps they will uh, they'll mobile soak their way out to Kansas cock the City. wagon and float across. <laughs> oh, everyone <laughs> loves barbecue, right? Uh, uh, you gotta you gotta be careful. You don't want to get tricked uh, by some Indians and have your clothes stolen. That wasn't the <laughs> that wasn't uh, the most progressive uh, Oregon Trail reference. It's like, do you trust some Indians to take you across the uh, river? It was a different oh, time. John. <laughs> they stole everything you owned. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm taking you. I'm taking you. And they gave you. Uh, they gave you <laughs> diphtheria, and you're all dead. Uh, that's what you get for talking to these Native Americans. Uh, they gave you a blanket. You're fucked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trevor in the chat. He, Trevor does make the good case against BYU. You have yeah. UCF plays defense. Yes. Played on this floor already. BYU hasn't played yet. UCF has length. The defense will get the job done. I see that, but I think also the fresh legs and this offense is going to carry BYU. But let me. I told you, I fell. I fell in love. I was watching UCF all by myself earlier, hmm. and I'm like, all right, I'm in. I'll take them. Good money line option for later. All right, Oklahoma TCU. They're the game after UCF BYU in the Big Twelve tourney. Uh, officially it's called the second round, but it's kind of the first round uh, noon on the West coast minus two and a half for TCU. Another one where, you know, we've, I think Colby's laid the laid out the case Porter Moser, maybe out the door. Uh, well, did you see, did you see what happened? Uh, this is happened? hilarious because you, you saw multiple reports of Mo, Porter Moser oh, to he, DePaul. He went, yeah. He went out <laughs> of his way, tweeted out. I'm yeah. not going anywhere. He's got which, like which, the boomer sooner gifts and everything, oh, so which okay, means he's so definitely fun. going yeah. because co <laughs> coaches have such a great track record of telling the truth. See Nick Saban today at Congress. Um, and uh, I can't um, trust him as far as I can throw him. <laughs> um, man, I mean, unless Oklahoma comes in with a strong ass offer, which I could see. Um, Interesting. Will Wade. Oh, I can see that too. Um, oh, that's uh, not what you're referencing there. Sorry. I, I'll go TCU. I mean, I'm terrified. TCU is on the bubble. Oklahoma's in. TCU has been it. fucking around lately, though. I don't know what it is. Same thing happened last year. Like TCU midseason, I, I bought a Final Four ticket on them. Then, no, nah, they, this they is sputtered a down right the here. stretch. They sputtered down the stretch. Some of it was injuries. Some of it was guys quitting team, quitting the team. But for whatever reason, they they sputtered. They also got a terrible draw in the NCAA tournament. But, but they need a win here. If you lose, you might not make the NCAA tournament. Um, I'll take TCU to get it done. This team knows that. That th this is the time we've been waiting for. We circled this team months ago. We said we're going to bet on them in March. This is when we bet on them. We're yeah, we lay the shore number. For me, it's as simple as I already got a future on TCU <laughs> and. Uh, this I'm is not how we fan. bet. No, I mean, come, come on. Like, I, I think TCU is a higher upside for the yeah. tournament. Um, but this is obviously a tough matchup. Like, they lost to Oklahoma previously. You look at the advanced metrics, it's pretty much a toss up. But the Oklahoma, I mean, let's go next level here. The Oklahoma kids have to know Porter Moser is is bullshitting right there. So, I, I, I think that's got to. 
that's got to hurt your locker room a little bit. And I think that's just enough for this TCU team who <laughs> to Colby's point, they have fucked around a little bit. Um, but uh, TCU, there's, we don't, I'm, I'm with, I'm on TCU. I like, them. and uh, I, I wanted to also pause at this point. Cause as if you're watching on YouTube, You'll notice that uh, while we talked about the last two games, the rundowns on uh, Fordham VCU or this Oklahoma game, it seems like Colby deleted Fordham versus VCU. Oh wow! To put a, a power five, a power six game on here, Colby <laughs> care to comment as to why Fordham VCU was executed? Uh, well, I uh, <laughs> didn't realize how many other games, and and let's be. <laughs> oh wow. The, the Colby freezing in this exact moment is almost is almost perfect. All right, we just leave him up here. We're we're just gonna leave frozen Colby. Oh, maybe he's back now. Colby, you were frozen. Anyway, uh, what, what, did, did you hear Col- what I said or no? I mean, no, we no. heard nothing. Did we get Colby the hardwired internet yet? Not yet. We're getting there. What left foot, right foot? No, um, no, no, March no, no, Madness, no. I think, has to happen. The shelf first. is there, though. That's we, good. The next thing, the most important thing, is Col- getting Colby to the airport on Monday. Oh, that's. We, I mean, if we can get cut to set odds on Colby <laughs> getting to the airport for March Madness, actually, I don't know what, what do we set that at, Ryan? Can we get who shows up to the airport first or last type bets? Uh, Ooh, that's interesting. There's three of them. Well, I, I've been I've been dominating Ryan on our Friday uh, Vegas flights. Ryan always prided to him as the last guy to the airport. And I, I was just boat racing him for most of the football season. I got these bored recent trips. I think I got bored. <laughs> he just liked hanging out at I the got airport. Bored. Uh, I'm getting <laughs> dropped off by my wife probably. Uh, but so that may be slightly earlier. It'll be, it'll be interesting. So on Monday, the, the wife and kids will be nowhere to be seen. Oh, so wow. I, I I'll be, I'll be a wild man. Uh, who knows when I get to the airport? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would probably, I will. We'll see. I, I would imagine I'll be a slight favorite. All right, let's uh, move along uh, to a, a, a game that is on the rundown. Lehigh, Sean's uh, Lehigh. Uh, his which but where? Where's the jersey? What are we doing? The jersey's not on. Uh, they're t- taking on Colgate for for the championship. Uh, oh. Colgate laying oh. seven. I'm sitting on a beautiful future for Colgate to win it all. Feeling great about it. I got tons of value. I think um, the money line here is uh, something ridiculous, and I'm I'm like I'm sitting on what was the money line minus two hundred, Colby. I have to go. Well, I don't know why you're talking about that side of it. I I think you should be highlighting the fact that me and Sean are on Lehigh plus six fifty tickets. So we both have value. We both have. I think that might have been a misprint actually, because I I like I. We gave it out at plus six fifty, but um, when I got it in, a lot of places had it like ten to one, eleven to one. So, uh, and I had a number of people tweet me tickets that are on Lehigh that are also smart betters. They got it at like twelve to one. So our six fifty, I feel like we're selling ourselves a little short I, on the yeah, sheet. Well, I know Kramer brought yeah. it down because because we were betting it personal. Um, he knew. We would be sharp on this green. So, uh, do, did we flag this? Did, did the gaming com- commissions that's that flag Temple flag this? <laughs> we are. We somehow both have value on both sides of this one. I'm on a minus two twenty mon- a money line for Colgate. You guys are on a Lehigh money line plus six fifty. Mm. The odds don't add up. Someone's getting cut. Col- uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm laying the points here. I'm not. There's no handicap. I'm I'm sticking with my future, like Sean highlighted earlier. And I'm laying it with Colgate. Good luck all, to Lehigh. I mean, did you watch that Lehigh Boston Good University luck. game? One of the all time games. This Lehigh team has no quit in them. And honestly, if the game would have happened on Monday or Tuesday, I would have been a little bit more nervous for this Lehigh team because of the quick turnaround, the overtime game, the dramatic comeback, everything it took to make that happen. But the fact that they got a little rest can reset. Um, talk things out, break down some game film, get their energy back. I, I think Lehigh plus seven. Smash! They're gonna win this fucking thing. They're gonna be in the tournament. I'm gonna be rocking this and only this uh, at when we're watching. Uh, I think <laughs> Colby, if they if they win this, are they gonna be in the playing games? Do you think they'll be one of the two <laughs> playing games? Yeah, probably because unfortunately, and part of our handicap, uh, besides Sean being a Lehigh fan, and 
uh, getting shit hammered at the at that gymnasium. I think you said um, uh, was Arena. the fact that the, yeah they're fourteen and, they're fourteen and seven, but a lot <laughs> a lot of it is because their best players were injured. Keith Higgins, you know, missed a ton of games. He's their second leading scorer, probably their best player on the team. You could make a case that he he could be. Uh, they also didn't have uh, Jalen Sinclair, their guard, and and Burke. Shubar, uh, their forward for a while. Uh, Donovic Parolin was out too. So like they missed, they had guys miss games a lot throughout the year. So yeah, they would, I think they'd be in a play in game, but um, look, they only lost both times to Colgate by three. And yeah. as you know, as much as I said, Colgate's a system play all year, the system did not look that strong this year. That's why they lost. Look, Colgate lost at home to Lafayette. They lost uh, at home to who was it? They lost uh, at home to a few teams. Uh, was it Harvard? I think got them. Amer- American. Um, and Lee, I, yeah, that's Lee, what I'm saying. So, on, Lee, I put it on Lafayette. If you haven't seen his game, uh, Cam Gillis, freshman uh, for Lehigh, only five eleven, but this dude, he's got uh, he's got some dog in him. Dog. He is a super fun watch. Put up thirty in this game, and you want to talk about teams that can kind of. Uh, rally and and proved to be a handful in conference tournaments and in the real tournament. It's teams like this with a guard like Cam Gillis from Fall Church, Virginia, majoring in arts and science. Shout out to Cam. Love uh, Falls it, Church. Just just put <laughs> it. I mean, put up thirty against this decent Boston uh, defense. Was shooting very well, distributing the ball like and gotta have it moments. He just lowered his shoulder, got to the line, took contact, hit his free throws. It's everything you want to see at a great guard play. The kids a freshman. Uh, the program, I think, is is turning a corner here. This They're is more athletic than Colgate, man. They're yeah. more athletic than Colgate. But the thing is, is Colgate has won this conference so many years that it's like, are are is Lehigh going to get rattled a little bit? I'm, you know, because they haven't really been in this spot. Colgate's been in this spot a hundred times. Um, but I, I, I'm with you. I think I love the play. I'm not gonna not gonna hedge here. I'm gonna say this on both shows. Lehigh. Yeah. With yeah, the Colgate's points. Pretty, Lehigh so money Colgate's line. Double lock. All right. Double wow. lock. Col- oh wow. Colgate fairly good at not putting you at the line too. So you know, may- maybe that that idea of their athleticism getting to the line not gonna happen in this one. No, but they can but, create. Well, maybe, maybe. But I, I would say like based on how Colgate plays, that w- it will be more difficult than it's been. Uh based on the the Ken Palm conference rankings, I would say uh Miak, Swack. NEC and Patriot League all going to be playing game candidates. I may, maybe Colgate could elevate out of that, but if it's Lehigh, one hundred percent playing. All right, uh, no, uh, we're Discord short on plays. Um, Discord has been on a heater. Very, Oklahoma, very, Florida very, State, very frustrating. Um, yeah, a couple plays, but it feels like we're not. Uh, you, you, you're agreeing with Colby, and I'm disagreeing with both of you too much. Kansas State. The Wildcats, they're heading down uh or heading to Kansas City to take on the Horns Downs of Texas. Max A. Smith, it's March. He's got to do something exciting this year, right? Texas laying four and a half. Colby. We discussed how we liked Kansas State in the futures market for the Big 12. So much so that I added them to my portfolio. Uh are and we, who are did we, I take? Who did you take? Texas. I took. I took, Texas. I took the. I took Texas and Kansas. Horns State. up! I took Texas and Kansas State for the record. I got both sides of this one. <laughs> got both sides of this one. <laughs> you like? I, got, I got you like the idea when we talked about it on the show. Yeah, but I can still make fun of you. I got to host a military tribunal. Got all these <laughs> all these guys going back playing both sides. Don't know which way is north and south. I'm securing a good position, you know. EV. I'm a V guy. <laughs> so who are you rooting for, uh, Kramer? Oh. I, th- I thought you were a D guy. Um, no, I'm, I'm confirmed I'm, V guy, big not B a guy. D. Big okay. B guy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I tend to agree that I think Texas is the play here. I think Texas, uh, it w- no matter what you think about the the conference map, normally I would pull up the locations to see who's the. Cl- it doesn't matter. Texas will have fans here. Uh, the game's at 4 p.m. It's late enough to it, it. No concerns. 4 p.m. on the West Coast. N- no concerns about any of that stuff. So I will lay it with Texas. Four and a half. Much better squad. 
Kansas State. Um, the reason for the future is insurance, though, because we like the weakness, the fragility of that part of the bracket. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, under, I understand the case path wise for both, but in this one particular game, I think it's you got to go Texas. Best effective field goal percentage in the conference, uh, hitting their free throws. I think in conference, they're pretty good. Now, Kansas State has a little bit of defense, especially in conference. But uh, they, they played not that long ago. Texas took care of business. I feel okay with Texas here. Colby, sorry, what are you doing? Yeah, and uh, you know, Dylan Dessou is 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 playing. That's huge for Texas. But uh, the guy you mentioned, Max Asmus, the irony here is uh, he was down to his final two schools. It was Kansas oh. State and Texas, and uh, I'm sure Texas said, "Hey, here's a shit ton of money not to go to Kansas State," and uh, and I think that will probably be the difference. Is Max Aspis is uh you know yeah. the the way if a he's been he's played in so many of these games, um he's, he's been in college for thirty years so I just feel like uh, Texas has all the edge here. Only thing that could get them is the momentum and K State maybe having the crowd. But I'm going to go with the Longhorns minus the points. A Smith's uh, college the same amount of years as Hunter Couture hmm. will be so, and 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 that's only uh, five years of playing which that's shocking to me. I would have I would have guessed longer. Uh, a Smith was playing for Oral Roberts back in 2020. All right, so, so we're all in Texas. unanimous on Texas. Yeah, Hor- I mean, also horns down. Max A Smith is just a he's just a fun dude to watch. It's, it's, it's a it's a elimination setting. You got to you got to take him. Yeah, he's, that, that dude has a punch of dog in him. Dog. All right, uh, for so I'm, I, I it seems like uh, Boston College late right in here. Um, Boston. Well, College I was gonna Thompson. put. I was going to put NC State Syracuse, but I remember how irritated Sean got the last time we put Syracuse on there. I do appreciate that. Don't don't need to jinx it. All right, BC Clemson. You know what side I'm on. B, I mean BC, not good. It, it, my big takeaway from the BC Miami game today: neither team very good. Yeah. Bad, now, as a guy team. who was on Miami, uh, not Ow. scared of Boston Clemson. College moving forward. Clemson lay the points. Got a future it, on Clemson. It's big, but I think you got to take Clemson. Yeah, it, Boston College fucking sucks. Colby handicapped this well earlier. Athletic programs are not the strength of Boston College. Colby, are you it, taking Clemson? Yeah, I'll, I'll take Clemson too. I mean, there is an advantage to getting that first game, which is always a little bit, little bit shaky because Clem, Clemson. It's not like they have a great track record of playing in the ACC tournament. But Clemson veteran team, I think they win by eight or nine. All right, last game. Uh, quick shout out to the anonymous Dumbo Octopus, Mink, Penguin, and uh, I think the, the a, a hippo just left us. Checking out the sheet in person, Sean, watching us click around all the the beautiful color, uh, colorful cells. Big Twelve back to Kansas City, Cincinnati taking on Kansas. Uh, Cincinnati had some oh wow moments today. I could see why they're laying a point in this matchup. At the same uh, time, and, and, well, they also had some oh wow moments of oh wow, you're letting West Virginia yeah, no, destroy you. Well, it, it was kind of that was an open for your interpretation yeah. kind of comment. Uh, certainly had some yes, as you mentioned, positive and negative. So I understand why they're laying the point here, but boy, are, like he- head tilt. Are we sure they should be laying a point against even this? A uh, weakened Kansas squad, and you might even be able to get two points. Whoa, uh, whoa. Yeah, you should do a check real quick. I'm checking. Actually, I'm seeing it off the board on the place I'm looking, but I know. Oh, no. Hmm. All right. Well, while uh, while I look, Colby. I'm saying I, I see two and a half now. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, Bearcats two and a half according to the chat. All right, Jesus, let's update. Late the team. Sheet. Let's update the. So, are do the injuries matter that much? Uh, I, I think it's two of the best players. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Part of part of me thinks, and you see this sometimes in the NBA, like the star removal theory, where all these guys, yeah. you know, hey, they got the the you know, you hear people with the Ewing theory or whatever Simmons. Like, uh, hey, the big names that everyone's talking about, and now, now you got this Kansas team as an underdog. Bill Self can come in there, and the, even the other guys filling in for K- uh, they're on they're Kansas Jayhawks. 
and is, he gets to he gets to go up to them and go these fucking pieces of shit in Cincinnati. These odds makers <laughs> think they're better than you. The whole gym here, he got kids up and down the Missouri River painting their face blue for you pussies, and you're not gonna show out. I think they destroy Cincinnati and then lose the next game. That's kind of my early take on this. I, I understand. I understand losing those guys is huge, but I I think Kansas now is a dog. They're a fun team. Is the Ewing theory the ninety nine Knicks theory with Marcus Camby and Larry Johnson and just playing small ball? Is that the Ewing theory? Uh, so the yeah, I mean the Ewing theory is essentially along that same lines of like yeah, your star goes out, everyone else has to elevate their game, but uh, yeah, I, I would, and, and I think it I think it's like happens the game after after that. You're fucked, and you really miss that big uh, level of talent. Well, uh, but I think there's, I think there's a one game get up spot in this Kansas team, and we saw it when uh, when Houston came to town, and they were, I'm with you, they were dogs at home. All of Kansas players are big time recruits, and they have the whole crowd behind them. It happens every year, and they play in Kansas City, and uh, the Ewing theory, I'm not buying into that shit. Uh, because Ewing was like 40 fucking years old. He went to the Sonics the next year and he sucked ass on the Sonics. So uh, no, I, 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 I mean, I buy into Kansas just being better. Their backups being better than Cincinnati starters. Give me the Jayhawks with the crowd behind them. The last two games that the Cincinnati Bearcats played against West Virginia in the first game, they scored 92 and gave up 56 in the second game. They scored 90 and gave up 85. <laughs> Maybe they were playing with their food. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just seems like this is, a, you know, we've been we've been betting for a long time. Yes. Feels a lot like a situation where Trap. Yeah, like what are we doing here? Of course I'm taking Kansas. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, they do have a plus sign next to their name. I thought that might throw you off. No, I just mm. it, it it seems very obvious that this would be the kind of spot where it's like, oh, I, I understand when to fade Kansas and when not to fade. Kansas. Come on, good job. Uh, those. Uh, hey, let's talk a little underdog fantasy. Shout out to Colby. Yes. I think we got the formula locked in. And uh, shout out to our. Uh, we do a, a monthly happy hour. We <laughs> almost hit. This is so funny. We got to talk about it. So, everyone who comes on to the happy hour, we put in a group underdog fantasy entry. Um, and you know, if we win, whoever, whoever's on the happy hour uh, gets to split up the uh, prize now. So uh, we, yeah. And, and everyone kind of chips in and, and picks what they like. So this is the entry we put in last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luka Doncic higher uh, triple double. That was Ka-ching. a spicy play and shout out to the NBA guys. They really carried this Victor Webb and Yama higher 22 and a half points that hit. DeAndre Ayton higher, 16 and a half points. That hit. NBA gambling podcast. Check them out. Uh Noah Beanick coming in with Trey Robinson higher. 31.55 fantasy points. Nailed it. Which is a hilarious bet. And then the last one, Kai Harvitz, <laughs> lower one and a half soccer fouls. The guy gets six fucking <laughs> fouls. <laughs> Uh, we would have had <laughs> would have had twenty five hundred dollars in bonuses to give uh, out to Colby. our uh, our uh, our uh, guys that work for us. So <laughs> unfortunately, that 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 did not come through. But Colby, we've been on it. Well, hold on, we put we fire the thing up one minute. Like it's literally the start of the game. I go I go Ryan, which is the guy where <laughs> we don't need to get fouls, and Ryan's like that guy right there, that guy. Oh, and he just hit him. Oh no. It, it, <laughs> It's like 60 seconds in. I'm like, wait, so that guy, we already got one foul. It was lower one and a half. And yeah. he fucker had six. Yeah. I was Googling what is a foul in soccer? It, it was, was a, really, it was really dark time. Uh, you can't like, yeah, like uh, I'll quote Boz. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> Shout out to the Premier League guys. They do, they have been killing it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, ladders, ladders. but we on the college basketball show, three in a row. Uh, we have a very strict formula now. We got it dialed yep. in. Colby, one higher, one lower. Oh my God, the the selection is incredible. Yeah, I got it. I got this one. Oh, oh you do? Right. Okay, all right, let's go. What do we got? I'll give you the choice, but I think Isaiah Stevens higher than fifteen and a half points against okay. uh, against oh, yeah. San Jose oh, yeah. State. Uh, is, fading it, San Jose State's yep, defense. Up, say no more. Yes, yep. dude. That, that guy. A, sorry to interrupt, but. He was on my guy. Like I just keep a random list of like dudes 
I want to see in the tournament go off and Colorado State's where are they at uh getting in, Colby? They're in, but they need to not lose this game because that could put them that yeah. could put them in a dicey but spot. Isaiah Stevens was on my list of like, hey, just pick this guy because he's gonna be fun as hell to watch. Round one in the tournament, depend on their matchup. I think I think they're they're gonna be live. I'll definitely take them with the points, but this uh he was I watched a couple of his like full games, super fun score, very fun to watch. Great pick, Colby. Yeah, and I look, I was I I, I was gonna have that as your thing with Posh Alexander, but those are the two hires because Posh Alexander returning to the Garden where he was at with St. John's in a while. Um, but I think I think Isaiah Stevens is the better play there. Now the the lower, I think is I think Colby you want to go. What he needed a lower. <laughs> he forgot about the. Lower. No, I have it. It's Isaiah. <laughs> it's Isaiah Hill. Oh, All right. Isaiah, I like this. Um, Isaiah Hill is uh, one of the better players for Fresno State, but twenty three and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Mm. Look, look, I think he's kind of quit on his team now. You got to go back to February twenty seventh. He scored twenty one against Utah State, uh, but he only had one rebound and three assists. Right, so he would have barely got higher then. And since then, sixteen points, three points, six points. Oh, all right. So, uh, Fresno State's going to have a brand new head coach, I think. So, I I like taking the lower. Okay. On Isaiah Hill, twenty three and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do we do we apply a little pressure and double up since we're on a heater? I already I actually had the same thought. Oh, I did no. it. <laughs> Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. Get the hundred percent deposit match uh, up to one hundred dollars. So put in a hundred bucks. It's March Madness. You're going to have some fun with these. Uh, we we're giving out some Colby. I know gives them out on their show as well. Fun times over there, Colby or, or Kramer. What do we got? We got the uh, uh, what do we AAC. got? We got a bunch of stuff. Before we do, I just real quick uh, aside. Uh, I saw this in the chat and thought maybe worth bringing up for you to. Oh, uh, so you have a new adversary, Nicholas Greenwall. A uh, spoiler alert: when we talk about. Uh, uh, big Sky, I may or sorry, Big West, same difference. I may be on uh, Cal State Northridge, uh, and and uh, Nicholas, uh, he challenged me to something in cut. Oh, um, and unfortunately, I woke. Well, I, it was yes, it was this morning, oh, but I I woke up after the game started. So my apologies, Nic- Nicholas, because uh, I saw your tweet, but at that oh, point, boy. it was already pretty far into the game. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know what? Cut doesn't give you a chance to Benedict. That's Colby's not comfortable <laughs> with the platform. Uh, yeah, Cut. Uh, can you give me an option to play both sides of this? Yeah. <laughs> can I switch at halftime? Uh, all right, we got the American Athletic Conference. Uh, <clears throat> wow, which is uh, Sean, of course. Of course, when you think of the American Athletic Conference, you think Fort Worth, Texas. At the Dickies Arena, probably wondering which basketball team plays at the Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Which, by the way, Sean, we we probably drove by this place. Uh, we were once in Fort Worth, Texas, mm. way too close behind enemy lines. There. Good times. Uh, no basketball teams play here. The Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. Uh, this is their ho- one of their home arenas. The uh, Panther City Lacrosse Club of the NLL and the Texas Rattlers of the PBR. We were discussing this earlier. Uh, the home arenas for the Pro Bull Riding Association. Is it that the Bull is home? What do you think, Colby? Is it the Bulls home, or is it the team of people that ride the Bulls home? Because we've we've kind of uncovered in this uh, conference tournament land the idea that these Pro Bull uh, teams have home home arenas. Uh, once again, I would like to know the last time they used the basketball floor. Have they tested it? Are we going to have any sort of issues? Slippery floors. Uh, this is a, a classic double buy uh, with a play in round. So we're talking about a partial first round and the top four seeds advancing into the semifinals. Should you take the South Florida Bulls then? Mm. Wow. You see what he just did there? That was excellent, Colby. All right, let's look at the odds real quick. The the meat meeps UTSA two fifty to one along with Rice Tulsa hundred eighty to one Wichita State along with Tulane one fifty to one East Carolina one twenty to one Charlotte fourteen to one UAB thirteen to one North Texas nine fifty 
South Florida plus 550, SMU plus 490, Memphis plus 440, and FAU plus 160. I mean, uh, FAU is the obvious uh, play here, in my opinion. Colby's going to dance around the idea of taking East Carolina as a long shot. I'm sure. Um, what well, else do you like, Colby? Uh, I mean, I love East Carolina in that uh, in that <laughs> bracket because if you look up, to me, you want something in the north side of the bracket. And you know, Rick Rick Barnes had Mike Schwartz as an assistant coach for a while, and one of the things Schwartz really studied was that the fact that he wanted to be the opposite of Barnes when it came to tournaments in March. So uh, I think there's a lot of value because ECU can beat South Florida. They can do it. Now. I think you, you got to sprinkle a little bit on Mike Schwartz and the pirates. And may the Schwartz be with you. It does. It is a nice tune. It is a nice tune. Well, and it's a nice bracket. All right. It is a very, very nice bracket. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, the South side of the bracket is where you don't want to be. And that's why I think it's crazy to take FAU. I know they have experience, but uh, FAU was also a team in the conference USA a season ago. All right. Um, I, I am all over ECU and Memphis. Memphis is on that side of the bracket, the North side of the bracket that I was referring to. Uh, and I think they're the most talented team in this whole conference. So I will Is uh, not eligible to win. No, they're still under investigation. So I think, uh, I think they're alive still. Oh, but they're odd. Uh, you know what? It, it's their odds are not offered because when I I'm realizing I, I, I just blindly copy and paste these futures. And I, I wonder if they, they're not offering temple future. Odds. Well, I know a lot of people aren't listing UTSA versus temple uh, as a bet. Like they're just not they're like, yeah, we don't need that headache. Interesting. Yeah. I realized, well, and, and the four, I realized they didn't list off temple The four <laughs> games with, uh, you know, with the um, suspicious wagering activity, they were two and two ATS. So and they, they just played the- a game. They just played a game without, you know, I thought they might be suspensions. Dumb me. Uh, you know, thought, Hey, let's fade temple. They're going to suspend the guys. Well, I guess they got to conclude their investigation before they suspend them. So uh, temple of course comes back down 10 and wins at the buzzer against UTSA. So um, my bets in there. Yeah, I, I wish I wasn't even, I, that wasn't even on my radar. Cause the game, all the other tournaments were on and it was just a regular season game. So I was like, Oh, fuck that game. But guys look South Florida as the one seed. I understand Amir uh, Abdul Rahim's doing an unbelievable job. Right, he he took Kennesaw State to the tournament last year. He goes to South Florida, gets the one seed. Them and UAB are on the top side of that bracket. Both those teams, South Florida just lost to Tulsa. All right, so like ECU can beat South Florida. Memphis should beat UAB. They just beat them by thirty the other day. Like that's gonna, the, that's the, that's the side of the bracket you want. FAU has to play North Texas, who always gives them fits. And then they're going to have to play either Charlotte or SMU. And then they're probably going to have to play Memphis. That's a hell of a gauntlet to go through three of those teams. I, I think that you want something from the North side. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like Memphis and then I'll put uh $5 on ECU because yes! if they win, we won't hear the end of it. Yes. No, why not? I mean, I believe in yes. the power. I, I, I'll tell you something too, guys. Because when you're at East Carolina, you go for it every time. Or you don't coach at East Carolina. You don't come to East Carolina. You don't play at East Carolina with a weak heart. Write it. Write it. Uh, they, yeah, okay. Um, they've lost five straight, Sean. You sure? That's the perfect. That's he's doing the anti East Barnes. Carolina? Barnes yeah. closes the season winning five straight. He's the well, anti they- Barnes. Uh, that that is one way to look at it. Uh, so, I, I'm I'm I haven't heard anyone talk me out of Florida Atlantic. Uh, right. Have fun with uh, that well, one. Well, because uh, what Colby said, like that side of the bracket is is a just just a gauntlet ride. I, mean, I think this conference in general, has Temple winning it would be it. just. I mean, do part of me wants to put a small bet on Temple just for comedy's <laughs> sake. 
right? Uh, I mean, if you can find, like I'm telling you, it wasn't there when I pulled these out. So if you if you can get down on Temple, I think almost as that would actually be a nice keepsake, you know. Get down on the Temple team that was fixing games. Get a paper ticket. I mean, it really would. Um, yeah, I, I don't you can't know. mess with Temple. Like their path is it, <laughs> it's so crazy. Even if you don't factor in the fact they could be fixing games. Well, would they be fixing them for them to win? Right, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll uh, I'll sprinkle. I will sprinkle UAB just to have some action on the other side. Wow, wow. So welcome what? to UAB. Right, said your Christmas card this year. No, is that, I, is that the he's, logic? He's a friend of the program. All right, um, so Kramer, FAU, UAB. I like uh, Memphis and ECU. Colby, what are you officially on oh here? Oh boy, here we uh, go. Memphis and ECU for, for now. Okay, now you're on uh, Memphis. And no, oh, I, I, I've never cute. switched a pick with East Carolina. All right, <laughs> you guys. Are so tune into the college basketball experience to see if. Uh, I mean, you know, who knows what could happen between now and an hour from now. <laughs> Uh, that would cause Colby to change his futures. Hey, shit of... changes. You don't just you don't just stick to a pick. If you find out a guy's out, especially in the college realm where you don't get injury reports, um, you you gotta you gotta dig. You know. I just came up with a really amazing idea for an automated uh, X account that just posts every time Colby changes a pick. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll call it we'll call it a, a Benedict uh, pick. Uh, Benedict picked on D. Benedict right, tracker. Let's head over to the SWAC, which, uh, in, in doing this and uh, using some sort of uh, sort of basic color coding for these conferences, it stands out how many conferences are basic as fuck using red or blue as their 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 colors. Uh, SWAC stands out, a little black, a little red. I like it. We're heading to Birmingham, Alabama, and and shout out to the SWAC for putting together a really nice graphic with your bracket. Uh, not not all the conferences put put the time into it like they they have here. Bought the extra package on Photoshop with the sweet uh, silver shiny graphics. <laughs> uh, it's the 2024 Starry SWAC Men's Basketball Tournament presented by Buick. So Star Starry's in Wait, there. So we're not doing the uh, the games. What do you mean? Rice, Wichita State, UTSA, Temple. Oh, that's right. Mm. Sorry, I was trying mm. to zoom ahead. Just trying to really? zoom ahead. About weed. Just trying to zoom ahead. Well, we talked about Temple not having a game, and then I, I scrolled yeah. down. Rice, 13 seed, 10 a.m. here in Fort Worth at a not basketball arena. Reminder: Don't know if there'll be moisture problems because they don't play hockey here either. It's just it probably just smells like bullshit. Uh, Wichita State, the 12 seed. I don't think either of us even. Uh, Took a peek down the board in the futures market. Not that far. Um, which one of these teams will we fall in love with and accidentally want to bet on in the in the second round? I don't know. Wichita State, the favorite. The shockers. I remember that. Remember when they went on their run and like they, it was just like, oh, it's a was shock. Was it just of weed. one year? Or was it? I feel like they were decent. No, no they've years, done it right? a bunch of years. They go back to yeah. the days of Antoine Carr and Xavier McDaniel yeah, making yeah. fucking great runs. I accidentally um, offended Colby by saying it was one time. Yeah. You're you incorrect. Here, um, uh, Bill Parcells, Wichita State graduate, buddy. Uh, Wichita. Um, shocker there. Wichita is going to fuck them up, man. Wichita just beat them by 21 the other day. Um, which, Wichita, I know they're not, I mean, it's year one of the Paul Mills era, but they're just a way better team. Can't trust Rice away from, uh, well, you can't trust Rice in general. Uh, I'll go, I'll go with Wichita. Rice did have a nice three game win streak earlier in the year against incarnate ward Northwestern. Uh, their roster is not actually that bad, man. Like rice's roster is bad then. What? It's, no, no. I was a, asking Colby. Why, why he thinks if their rosters are right, why do they think they're shitty? They've been a very hard team to get a gauge on. I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if it's cause none of their private school fans show up to the fucking game. Oh, um, but uh they have a better roster. They have a better roster than you would think. Um, but I'm still taking Wichita, the culture. Both of these teams are ass. I mean, Wichita State beat Rice by twenty one yeah. not too long ago. I it's hard for me to think that much has changed. I'll take Wichita State minus three. Kramer, I assume it's chalk. Oh yeah. Uh Benedict Dantle, great line in the chat. Uh wheat versus rice. Like that. One starts <laughs> must win. <laughs> 
I I I will uh, I will go for the wheat over the white bread. Uh, we I saw we were the 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 the, the clip came out of us breaking. Oh yeah. Down, breaking Very down mayo versus no one. No whip. one stood up for Miracle Whip. Yeah, because it fucking sucks. <laughs> I mean, I rarely am I confident that my take was 100% correct. I was 100% correct. Meet meet. We're heading along to t- 12 p.m. And uh, also, American Athletic Conference very risque with their timings. Most of these conferences go with a two and a half hour window. They're like, nah, we're good. Two hours should be uh, just enough. Noon on the West Coast. UTSA taking on Temple, who promises they're not uh, doing anything illegal when it comes to gambling. Temple, a pick. What? Why is it if you host a gambling show that you have to speak seriously about uh, match fixing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is this is a very serious thing. We can't make jokes. I, I mean, I don't know what to do here because Sean and I met a dude at the fucking Super Bowl. He told us about how he was getting got an offer from the mob while he was at the SEC. Well, we don't even have to. Sh- ne- uh, next thing you know, he's talking about it on all these other shows, and it's like yeah. Jesus, dude. Should have booked him. Well, also, come on, you want to talk about it? How, how do I know this story is not true? I, oh, look at this. Ryan sticking up for the mafia. Uh, you know, this is just anti Italian di- di- discrimination. Call me. Call me. Yeah, you know what? So, a couple guys at a gentleman's social club come up to you and start talking about how you're going to perform in a game. All of a sudden, you're accusing them of such things. Yeah. Colby, if the mob <laughs> talks to you about something, you're going to tell everyone about it? Yeah, that's probably. Although, there is a mob guy who has a podcast now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, mob guys can talk about it. It's the it's the guys who aren't in the mob who've had the interactions with the mob. I'm always I'm always skeptical about the ones that are uh, spilling the beans. Feels feels like not something I would do. Uh, UTSA Temple, like I said, it's a pick 'em. This is, uh, this game's so hard to handicap because Temple's beat UTSA twice. Oh, now I know. They they just beat them 84 82, and then they beat them February 18th 83 77. But then there's also these red flags of the wagering stuff. What do you are mean? they are they trying really hard now to throw people off the scent uh, from them fixing games, or are they gonna just? I don't. I think in a weird way, everyone accusing them of fixing games. This is the biggest motivation of their life. Like, hey, Wagner's playing for a chance to win uh, the NCAA tournament. They're going to be in the tournament. That's a big opportunity. What about the opportunity to not go to jail? These kids are literally playing for their lives. You go out there and you ball out that, that changes the discourse as far (laughs) as whether or not you're fixing games. The more I think about it, the more I love these temple kids. Now give me UTSA. They just lost at the buzzer. Uh, They blew a 10 point lead. No, 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 no. They they blew a ten point lead. This is in Texas, all right. Yeah. This is their home turf. So uh, give me uh, UTSA. They can score a shit ton of points. UTSA, they just can't play any defense. But uh, I just think the revenge of just this just happened the other night. Give me them Roadrunners. Meep meep. All right. I mean, if in fairness, Rice also from Texas. True, but they're uh, but private yeah. school. Yeah. Another one of these, another one of these games, Sean Kramer. Is, what do you do? How do we? How do? How do so many conferences end like this, where we immediately get the rematch yeah. in the playing? It round? is tough. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't fade it. I have to take Temple. I, I'm with you. I, like, forget the forget the angle of we need to show we're not betting on the games. It's more like, oh, there's two uh, sides, right? Either it's like, oh, you can't bet on us. We'll show them, or, oh, I can't bet on myself. Who gives a shit? So it's a dangerous, uh, but I, yeah, I'm gonna roll with. I, I, I've been riding the trend blindly. I'm gonna continue here. All right, shout out to the American, Fort Worth, Texas. Not the city I would have chosen for my uh, conference tournament, but that's that's on them. All right, let's head over to the SWAC. SWAC. As I mentioned earlier, the 2024 Starry SWAC Men's Basketball Tournament presented by Buick. It's at the Bartow Arena. In Birmingham, Alabama, it's a sta- I, I love the I, I love a good standard tournament. Eight teams, you know how it works. You got a first round with four matchups. Um, they're if, if you're wondering, um, they're playing at the home of the UAB Blazers. Shout out to the Dragons. Looking at the odds, only eight teams. 
Alabama A and M the seven seed twenty five to one. Bethune Cookman the five seed eleven to one, along with Alabama State the eight seed. Jackson State the six seed plus six fifty. Grambling who won the regular season crown the one seed plus four eighty. Texas Southern the three seed plus four twenty. Alcorn State the two seed. Still haven't found out what happened to Steve McNair. The uh, plus four hundred and Southern. Mm. I and, and if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe these odds moved a bit post open, and Southern has been bet down to plus two ninety here. Colby, what's the what's the angle? Why the why the movement here? We got a we got the one seed with the fourth longest odds, the four seed with the shortest odds. Well, because this is chaos, but I, 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 uh, I mean, how are you not going to take Texas Southern when they, when they win that, it every year? That, that was my, I mean, you, you just look at the top, um, top three offense and defense in conference efficiency wise, Texas Southern's the only one uh, that's there to Colby's point. They dominate uh, or like, you know, they historically win this a bunch and coming in on a nice little five and one run including a, a bunch of conference games. So yeah, I'm going to keep it simple here and just takes Texas Southern. Texas Southern that? has won this tournament seven of the last 10 years. What was that price on uh, Texas? Yeah, Southern? Oh. Four twenty, bro. 420. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Far um, out. I'm in, but I, that. I'm also going to sprinkle uh -oh. Bethune Cookman because I think Bethune Cookman can get Southern and uh that would then put them in a matchup against Grambling or Alabama State, which I would imagine will be Grambling. But I think that's anyone's game. And then next thing you know, you're in the championship. I want the other side of that bracket of Southern. I know Alcorn State's won nine games in a row, and I think they've won. I think they've won twelve of fourteen, if memory serves me correct. Um, but I just can't trust that. that they're kind of new to the scene. You can't trust them in the tournament, especially because SWAC games are all like a one point game. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, Texas Southern and Bethune Cookman. Reggie Theus got Bethune Cookman scoring. Watch so you out! Think the winner is coming out of this game. So you're just playing both sides of it. What are you talking about? Bethune Cookman and Southern. No, oh, no Texas, Texas Southern. Southern. Got yeah, it. All right, yeah. All right. I I was just I, I was just heat checking that, making sure. <laughs> I mean, I I did it in in like a, a 15 team playing round type deal. If Colby's doing it in an eight team standard tournament. I wanted to make sure the audience was aware. I didn't want a concerned audience member reaching out to let us know. I like Texas Southern. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is this a two shot? Are you are you double shot and Sean? Are you Me, just no, going single, single shot. shot? Come on. I think you got a single shot. It. All right. Texas Southern unanimous. Even a producer Josh is on uh, Texas Southern. Four twenty. Come on, guys, get in. Set. What, what was that, Colby? Seven. Weed. Seven of the last ten. Yeah. Taken down by Texas Southern, and uh, you know, candidly, they have they have a nice path. It's hard to see hard hard to see how they don't uh, get to the final. Let's hop over to these games all on Wednesday, March thirteenth, eleven a.m. here on the West Coast. They're playing in Alabama, as I mentioned earlier. Alabama A and M <clears throat> and Alcorn State. Uh, two seven matchup. Alcorn State laying only four. So what's the handicap here? <clears throat> I, most of these teams, based on looking only at their statistical profile, are not very good at basketball. Which leads me to believe maybe we need to pivot back to just take the points. Well, I mean, I mean, Alcorn State's won nine Al in a row. That's what I'm saying. They've won twelve of fourteen, including a th a three point win there on January 11th. Uh, that was outside of their their stretch uh, against. That was at Alabama A and M. I'll, I'll take uh, Alcorn. They're fucking hot right now. They just beat, you know, a lot of good team. I mean, good good swag teams uh, on that run. And the, you look even look at the losses. You know, they lost to Southern by one. Um, they've played just a lot of close games in the swag, but I'll lay the points here. Um, no real strong conviction to it. I just think, cause I do think they're due and you play that many close games. You're due, due to win or lose to, to, to get caught. I think it's going to be the oh. next game though. I think they get through this one. I think the next game they get caught. All right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 100% on Alcorn state here. Yeah. 
No, Alcorn State, they're playing too good a ball to to not take me. It is funny to see some of these lower conference teams and how they they generally are tune ups for other teams to start the season. So they'll start off with these hilarious losing streaks. <laughs> and then they hop into their conference and they start rattling off wins. Well, I mean, another like thing is swag. they they play on the road for two months. Yeah. They're not as bad as you think because of because of that. Like you go and see they were, you know, one in fifteen or something like that. They didn't play a home game. The yeah, they're collecting all the bags, you know, they're paying for the program. They played their first home game against a D one opponent on January twentieth. Season oh, started November fifth. Yeah. That's, um, that's bonkers. I'm sure they have a nice bus though. Don't worry. For uh <laughs> Grambling, the one seed laying only one and a half. Against Alabama State, the eight seed, uh, five thirty p.m. on the West Coast. Colby, explain this one. Swack, the swack, um, swack, swack, swack. Yeah. Swack. Uh, well, look, Alabama State just beat them in double overtime on March Instant 9th. Revenge. Instant revenge. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll take Grambling to get because Grambling was on a big win streak before that. They had won six or seven in a row, I think. Um, but uh, obviously that's concerning, but uh, yeah, I, I think they bounce back. I will take grambling minus one and a half to get it done in Birmingham. I mean, uh, Alabama state caught him sleeping, but grambling is a much better team and the instant revenge. It, it, they, it was, it was at Alabama state. Like that obviously is going to be a tougher spot than a, than a neutral site here in Birmingham. Very so. stinky. Uh, yeah, the only to Kramer's point, the only thing that scares me is how thing. obvious it is to take Grambling here. Oh, the public will be all over this. All is right. there a, is there a big public uh, sharp slit on I, this? I can't imagine we got a lot of. I mean, they won the conference eighty one oh eighty one percent of the bets, but only forty nine percent of the money on Grambling. Uh, okay, I, I'll st- I'll be a donkey. Happy to be a donkey here. All right. It's Dominic the donkey. Uh, for the swack and the meak, I thought we should cover the whole since they're classic and we like a classic uh, first round where you include all your teams. Uh, included their entire first rounder. So oh, we are wow. more games. So, uh, real quick, you know, wanted to wanted to get through all of them. Uh, heading over to Thursday the fourteenth for these two. Eleven a.m. on the West Coast. Jackson State the six seed. Texas Southern the three seed. I assume we're all on Texas Southern laying the point here, as we do have a, a <laughs> unanimous future yeah, on them. This one's pretty easy. Well, that's why I w- figured. Is Dion we- playing? Oh wow! No, no but Mo it? Williams is is uh, is Jackson State's head coach, the former Cleveland oh, Cavalier. Really? And I'm telling yeah. you, their team is talented. Their team. Oh. I don't know how the fuck they finished sixth. Uh, I actually think, up. from like a roster standpoint. They uh they they have one of the if not I probably would say they have the most talented roster in the uh in the swag but I'm still taking Texas Southern. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I I we we uh we always joke about this in NFL time, but so, some programs just knew how to know how to do the trip better than others. They know they know how to do the road trip part of the uh, the sports better, and and I, I'd imagine with winning seven of these, you you're doing something better than the other. Bethune Cookman, the five seed, Southern, the four seed, five thirty PM on the West Coast. Colby's other on um, other uh long shot here. Bethune Cookman has an eleven to one long shot. They're catching four and a half in the first round. I assume you're just gonna take them because you think they're live on the money line here. I think Reggie Theus has this team playing well. Um, and I think you don't have to look that far back. March second, they beat Southern by six. Um I just think that they're they swept Southern actually, um, but they're just a. Uh, I feel like they could win this whole fucking thing because they can score. Um, yeah, four and a half is to me like do- there are going to be some dogs that hit in the swag tournament because I know I'm taking three favorites in a dog, which is terrifying. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think that the numbers off. I don't understand how they have Southern even favored when Bethune swept them. I think Bethune's a better team. I think Bethune's got more more guys that can create shots, um, so I will take Reggie Theus and Bethune to get it done. Well, fu- yeah, the future the future price certainly speaks. Well, pretty- it's weird. I mean, Bethune Cookman beat them twice, right? And Southern's uh, favored by four and a half. What yeah. am I missing here, Colby? Is there was there a weird injury? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Um, I know be something going on here. Well, get- I, I mean, it, it's just odd, like it, the head to head. 
But to your point, like I think Bethune Cookman just could have their numbers. So yeah, give me BC and the points. I'll I'll ride with you. Yeah, actually, you know what? Lay, I'm gonna lay it. I'm gonna lay all four. I I, Sean, I started by saying yes. maybe take some dogs, and I took no dogs. Sean, I think you'll like the uh, the free throw disparity here. Sixty third in the nation is Bethune Cookman. Southern is three hundred and twenty first. That's all you need to know. Do they even do free throws in this one? All right, let's head over to the Miac. They, they just dunk from the free throw line, dude. That's a free throw. No, that's fine. Uh, let's head over to the Miac. Uh, Chad G in the chat said, "Fuck, gonna have that Dominic the Donkey song stuck in my head now." Sorry, not sorry. It's Dominic the Donkey. Ha. I mean, to me, I like it better as far as earworm songs that are stuck in your head. No offense, Colby. The ECU song's been stuck in my head. I I, I need it cleansed out with a Dominic the Donkey. It's Dominic the Donkey. I mean, we we grew up with this. I, That's offensive. I'm, sho- I'm shocked that so many people didn't have <laughs> Dominic the Donkey uh, as a childhood song played on the radio. They played that on like the popular radio station. All the radio stations in New Jersey played that fucking song. Colby, remember early in the show when Ryan stood up for the mafia? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I just was going back to that game. For the mafia. Oh, you know, you know, this guy's kids making up a story. You know, you can tell he says these wise guys come after. I'm him. just saying that most people wouldn't go run on <laughs> camera with your face and your voice <laughs> and talk shit about the mob. That just seems like a thing. You it, not a wise thing. Fugazi. Uh, he might have been Fugazi. I don't know. Uh, Miak conference tournament. We're heading to the Norfolk Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. Home of uh, Colby, you like this? The ABA Virginia Squires played here from seventy. I I'm well aware of that. I have a uh, well somewhere. My mom, well, when I was a child, I had a Dr. J Virginia Squires jersey. Oh, wow. uh, I don't know where the fuck it's at. In the there's probably some uh, oh, no. five, five and dime place in uh, in <laughs> in uh, DC or Virginia or something where someone's wearing a uh, one dollar. Dr. J Jersey, but this, uh, has, this has also been the home of the ODU, the old dominion monarchs a basketball team for a bit. The Hampton roads admirals who were a minor league hockey program until the year 2000, the Norfolk Nighthawks, uh, who were a, a part of the arena football league uh, until 2003, the Norfolk admirals, another minor league hockey program, the Nor- Norfolk sharks with <laughs> This is amazing. The, the sharks is spelled S H A R X sharks. And I'm not sure what league this is, but it's the M I S L I'm, I'm assuming this is some sort of soccer or lacrosse uh, until 2012. And currently it's the home of the admirals, the hockey team. So again, no basketball being played here, Sean, mm. a hockey arena. Typically there's going to be moisture issues. Hopefully not. I'm just saying we got to get ahead of this. Uh, it's standard tournament. We got the, you know, eight teams standard first round. Let's look at the odds cop and state, the eight seed 150 to one. That's comical Maryland, Eastern shore, the seven seed 60 to one Morgan state, the five seed 21 to one Delaware state, the six seed 10 to one South Carolina state, the three seed <laughs> six to one Howard, the bison four seed plus four fifty. North Carolina Central plus two twenty in Norfolk State, the one seed plus one seventy five. I actually is this this is not their home arena, correct, Colby, or is it? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't think it is. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it is either. It didn't come up in my uh, my research. But they're essentially the home team here, I guess. It you know, for sure. And now that Hampton's not in this conference. They have, uh, yeah, they should have an edge there because of that. Um, now, A and T, I mean, North Carolina Central since Lavelle Moton, I almost said A and T, that would have been bad. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, they've been kind of the the pride of this conference, I would say, of late. I don't know. I mean, actually, maybe you'd say Howard too. Um, but uh, I, I I would say you want to take a future. You want something with some value, and these games are all fucking bonkers. So uh, South Carolina I, State, Colby, they played good, man. Down the stretch, I, fought, I felt like they played pretty solid. Um, and Morgan State was red hot to the end of the season too. Um, I, I just I'm gonna go Central and Howard because I feel like it's their conference. 
It's their conference every year, almost like Texas Southern. Um, Clark yeah. pointing out it's the major indoor soccer league uh, that I was referencing. He used to go to the Baltimore Blast games back in the eighties. <laughs> Uh, I I mean I like this profile of the South Carolina State team now, uh, the coming off a loss there against North Carolina Central, but wins at Coppin State, Morgan State, Maryland Eastern Shore, Delaware State, Howard lost to Norfolk State, but in OT, Chicago State, Coppin State lost to Morgan State, but again they avenged that. Uh, Maryland Eastern Shores, everyone beats them up. Delaware State, North Carolina Central a win. They've they've held up their they've held their own in conference. I'm just gonna take a single bullet here. South Carolina State at plus six hundred. All right, don't let the I dogs got, get hot, Sean. Don't I, let I, the dogs I, get hot. I got one. It's it's not the same one. Is it's, it Coppin? It's a, it's Morgan. State. Bitches be Coppin, Ryan. Morgan State. Feel free to use that, Colby. I, <laughs> Morgan State has already so so Morgan State is the five seed. They open against Howard. Who they have beaten this year? They also, if they win that game, they would then go on to play who? Uh, the winner of Norfolk State and Coppin State. There's a random upset there. They've dominated Coppin State this year. So I, I would, you know what? Let's do this. Let's take Morgan State at twenty-one to one, and then we, uh, we sprinkle as we'll, we'll call that our Norfolk State insurance. Okay. That's it. Two shots. Norfolk State and a little insurance on Morgan State. Because that that they're gonna be the team that they're playing in the second round. All right. You single shotting? Yeah, no, South Carolina State. I mean, in these what you got eight teams. That's I I, I don't wanna well, Colby had four teams in the XFL. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, you got your two favorite teams in the North Division. <laughs> there's four teams, and then two favorite teams in the South Division. Never took teams. any of the dome teams. Never <laughs> which, took any of the dome teams. Which, by the way, Sean, that they are. I believe they are calling it the XFL conference and the USFL conference. Oh, okay, Colby. How many teams are in the UFL? Perfect time to plug the UFL gambling <laughs> podcast coming soon to a feed no. near you. Uh, eight. For some Eight. stupid reason. Now, how many favorite teams will you have? Because I'm well, looking at these. They, you, first off, you got to have DC defenders. Now, I know you don't like dome teams, but the St. Louis Battlehawks. Oh, you want to yeah. talk about a team that That's actually team. has a fan base that, yeah, that, that sold out the stadium? <laughs> they sold out the stadium. They were the, the bottom only row. The bottom row. Don't don't act like they <laughs> did, they, they were caught at a the, sellout. You saw the um, Vipers. They had like twenty guys there. Most of still, them were on work. It's release. a fake ass sellout. They got the whole top row. You're playing at this ridiculous ridiculous stadium. Um, I'm looking at the USFL side. Colby likes the Houston Roughnecks. Yeah, give me all the dumb teams. The but, no, but that should be the Gamblers. That should be the Gamblers. They oh, made it the right. Roughnecks. Yeah. yeah. Why they change that? So. Birmingham Stallions, yes. Memphis Showboats, yes. But he hates their New Jersey. Michigan no, I can't Panthers, take the Showboats. Yes. Can't can't take the Showboats. <laughs> Panthers, new, no. Panthers, really? Dome, Ford Field. Uh, um, it, so it's it, we're down to DC. This, I don't know this man on this Zoom screen. We're down to DC and we're down to Birmingham. All right, Skip Holtz, baby. ECU. I'm gonna, I got to be honest. I'm going to have to do some roster study before I uh, come to any sort of conclusion. Matt Corral's on the Birmingham Stallions. I mean, he was in the NFL. They they still have Jamar Smith, Sean. Jesus. All right. Look, we got to save this. We can't cloud our minds. It's still March. At, at least it, last year the XFL was in like week 4 uh, this time. They, they were absolutely stupid. All right, let's talk first round. Uh we just mentioned this one, Coppin State, Norfolk State, Norfolk State laying 13. Mighty big number, 3 p.m. here on Wednesday, March 13th, 3 p.m. on the West Coast. Colby, what are we doing here? Lay it. Lay it. Really? Larry Stewart, the old Washington bullet power forward. Well, he's a compensated alum, but year one's been a little tough. Um, I'll lay it two with wins. Norfolk. Two wins. Two well, wins. Norfolk's at home, too. I mean, I know it's not the home stadium, but it's home. But Coppin but, played them tough, Colby. They lost, uh, Coppin State lost by 10 at home, and then. Or sorry, when Norfolk was at home, and then, you know, in Coppin, uh, they they only uh, Norfolk only won by two points. I, I I feel like this could be a hair high. Sean wants the Eagles of Coppin State. Yeah, I'm going Coppin actually. Which yeah. in Coppin is actually Baltimore. So, and hmm. and Clark is right in the chat that the Atlanta Falcons stole the Houston Gamblers uniforms. 100 correct. As, oh, you know. Oh, oh. 
Uh, they should go back to the red. And by the way, Clark, George, uh, the Falcons' red uniforms were completely bit from the Georgia Bulldogs too. Commissioner so they've been Goodell a, they've been a fake ass Clark. franchise for a long time. Commissioner Goodell listens. He's going to be. We got to get Jerry Glanville back on the show. Sort some <laughs> of this out. Yeah, seriously, Definitely. you're running your mouth a ton. Uh, I, I mean, you look at the you look at the advanced metrics. Norfolk State should just dominate, but I would say the fact that Coppin State held uh, held their own in both games, and you're giving them 13 points, and you're giving them a little bit of hope. Uh, I I like Coppin State here, actually. They're bad. The the yeah, color. No shit. That's the why color, they're getting 13 the points. The color red on their uh, profile is really really bad. Uh, yeah, you know what? Give me Norfolk State. They shoot. They're all right from the line, and they get to the line a lot. Uh, I, I like that. Maryland Eastern Shore. This is the team you look to fade. Okay. Well, they're they're also bad. Uh, so bad, Sean. That once upon a time, they even lost to Coppin State. Maryland <laughs> Eastern Shore is the yeah, seventh seed I'm here. Saying. Five. Co- you're, you're you're talking like Coppin State's the worst team, and we haven't Ooh. gotten to Maryland Eastern Shore yet. They've lost an impressive amount of. G- I can't imagine too many teams have lost more games than Coppin State this year. Five p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, Eastern Shore taking on uh, Central North Carolina Central, laying nine and a half here. Colby, you laying it? Are you? Uh, yeah, you laying it once again. Yeah, I'm not fading Lavelle Moat, and it, it, they just played in like Central won by like 30. I feel like it was something they just played not that long ago, like last week in in February, and yeah, Central North, won won what's Central that? won by 33. Um, yeah, and Maryland Eastern Shore. If you look at Ken Palm teams, they're ranked 349. And like I said, Central's kind of Lavelle Moat keeps this program to me as one of the one of the more elite programs in the MIAC. Uh, they're 50th in the country with a defensive rating. That is all the difference for me. 89th in offensive rating too against, uh, but uh, what uh, the 354th ranked offense? Give me no, central. Maryland Eastern there. Shore is really bad. Uh, North Carolina Central for the win. Yep. Dark red. Dark red on Ken Palm. Fade at all costs. And quickly, same same as the SWAC. A c- couple games on Thursday. 3 p.m. on the West Coast, Thursday, March 14th. Morgan State, my uh, dark horse, the five seed, taking on Gus Johnson's alma mater, the Howard Bison, the four seed. Howard laying six. Easy decision for me here with Morgan State. Um, yeah, again, maybe this is just a just a TMZ guy sitting at the surface looking at the pretty colors of all the fish. But uh, I, I believe. <laughs> I believe uh, they split with Howard this year, and uh, n- not exactly sure why the number is so big. Colby. Um. Well, it's probably because last time they played Howard won by six, though. Um. I am with you though. I think Morgan State can cover this. Um. I'm. T- I have a future on Howard, so I think Howard will win. But uh, I think Morgan State's played much better basketball down the stretch, and that can make it a dangerous game. Howard gets the win though, but give me the points. Imagine you're Morgan State and you open the season. You got to play Arizona, and they beat you 122 to 59. That's, I mean, the, all right. Love to hear. And and then the next game, you beat uh, Chain A, Chain A, Chain A, 100 to 52. What what a, a wild uh, way to start the season for the Bears of Baltimore, Maryland. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if Howard should be laying six against anyone. I mean, it's as simple as that. Give me Morgan State plus the points. I'll trust Colby on this one. Delaware State, the six. Are you, what are you doing, Ryan? Oh, I'm on. I'm 100 on Morgan State. I got the. I got a little sprinkle on them, Sean. Remember, 21 oh, yes. to one. Delaware State, the six seed. South Carolina State, the three seed. 5 p.m. on the West Coast, Thursday, March 14th. One point spread. Uh, the Thursday games, I do think, uh, are prick Dundee numbers. Correct. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, so Colby, what are we doing here with this, uh, the Delaware state matchup? Yeah. I mean, I think South Carolina state's played much better ball, but man, wh- when you get to the Miak and the swag dogs hit at a much better rate, there's going to be some dogs that win outright. Give me Delaware state to upset South Carolina state. These teams are the same team and they're both shitty. 
Oh, come on. You guys aren't seeing the potential this I'll, South, I'll take South Carolina, Carolina State, State has. I'll, I'll take South Carolina State. What that. is it? Is it uh, South Carolina State's 312th offense or 248th defense? Because I can tell you the difference is Delaware State's got 123rd ranked defense oh. and the 300th ranked offense. So Delaware State actually charts better offensively and defensively despite being the dog. Colby thinks you're wrong. Um, nah, come on. I mean, South Carolina State. <sighs> You really want you really want me to drop the hammer on Delaware State for you, Colby? I mean, they they took care of Delaware State. Uh, I know you like to settle it in your uh, in your uh, textbooks over there, but they beat Delaware State both times at home and on the road. One more yeah. makes it three. Easy. Third time's the charm. Great work. This concludes callback from previous episode. This concludes the meak. All right, whack time. One of our favorite conferences, uh, whether it's Colby talking about Tarleton State or uh, CJ trying to search for Grand Canyon National Championship futures, <laughs> been a hot topic in the office all season long. Whack the 2024 Hercules Tires Whack Basketball Tournament is being played at the fabulous Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. <clears throat> Interesting. I learned something new here. Did you know that the Las Vegas Wranglers were a uh, minor league hockey program that played at the Orleans until 2014? The Las Vegas Gladiators, another minor league hockey program that played there in 2007. I didn't know any the, of this. Uh, well, I don't know what the Las Vegas Sin is. I believe it's the uh, Lingerie Football League. Oh, 2011 yeah. to 2013. Those chicks. It's like that South Carolina <laughs> chick. She used to play for the Lingerie Football League. The, uh, laid down a hammer. The Vegas Legends uh, played there in twenty until twenty sixteen, which is uh, was an indoor soccer league. The Vegas Rollers. The league acronym is WTT. Not exactly sure what this is. That was twenty nineteen. Uh, maybe I'll click the link. And then the Henderson Silver Knights of the AHL. Once again, an arena that doesn't uh, normally play basketball, but we're pro this because it's Vegas, uh, and anything goes in Vegas. All right, let's run down the odds. We got eight teams. Cal Baptist, the eight seed, eight uh, eighty-five to one. Uh, whenever I think of Cal, uh, when I hear Cal Baptist, I think of uh, our buddy Jong, who I uh, think the first time he came to the office, he tried to push uh, a Cal Baptist position on us. <laughs> Abilene Christian, the seven seed, is sixty to one. Utah Valley, the five seed, fifty to one. Stephen F. Austin, the six seed, twenty-five to one. Seattle, the four seed, eight fifty. UT Arlington, the three seed, eight to one. Tarleton, Tarleton State, the two seed, five to one. And Grand Canyon, the one seed, minus two ten. Uh, I should have mentioned at the top. This is a West Coast Conference style, so we just do the mega buys. Uh, eight teams in this one, which means we have the Grand Canyon Tarleton State double buy right into the semifinals. Yeah. I and mean, so imagine having eight teams. You can create a perfect tournament with four first round matchup, and you say, no, 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 no. Get, uh, get these uh, good teams all the way in the semifinals. What are we, uh, what are you snagging up here? To Tony? me, the formula is pretty simple. One, Tarleton State's plus 500. Two, they're already in the semifinals. And, <laughs> and three, they already beat uh, Grand Canyon. So, what am I missing? And they're not eligible to make the actual tournament, which means they're going <laughs> to win. Like that's how this stuff works. Uh, now, yeah, granted, they also did lose to Grand Canyon by uh, twenty six uh, in Arizona, but this game isn't being played in Arizona. So, give me Tarleton State in the plus odds. Colby, am I crazy? I mean, not really with this stupid bracket, but I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to take them. Um, I'll go. You got to take Grand Canyon. You got to take one of the teams on the right side of the bracket. Ooh. But, uh, but to me, the value is UTA. UT Arlington down the stretch won. You know their final six games really should have been seven. They got hosed in the Tarleton State game, and that would have been an eight game win streak then. Uh, but look who they beat too. They went to Seattle, took took them down at the Crack House by twenty. Took down Utah Valley in in Valley. Um, I I just think they're playing really good ball right now. And another thing is it's a bit of a distraction. Uh, Tarleton, you thought they were going to go with the interim head coach after uh, Billy Gillespie had a, a kidney problem in, in mid December. 
Uh, uh, see, that's my problem. I wasn't factoring in Billy Gillespie's kidney in my handicap. Apologies. Well, well, fans. I actually think this could be a legit distraction because no, no, he's. I uh, uh, people thought he was going to retire for for good, right? Like this is the end of his career. He because he had he hadn't been that good over the past couple of years, and the interim was just you know lightning in the bottle there down the stretch. But then he announced that uh, they signed a new extension. He's coming back for the next two years. So I don't know what, what the pulse of that locker room's like with that, but um, I'll take grand Canyon and UTA. Cause I think UTA is playing the best ball in the whole conference right now. Oh, you're, so, you're a late I mean, two solid, ten. solid case for UTA. I guess to me, it's just, you got to play one more game. So I'll take, I'll take Tarleton uh, in the in the plus five. I'm, I'm sorry, that I I might have missed the the part of the did she, they call me just lay Grand Canyon. Oh my bad. I thought you said plus two hundred. My bad. Uh yeah, don't take Grand Canyon then. Just oh, take wow. UTA. Yeah. Now we know Grand UTA. Canyon. <laughs> uh, all right. Um. Well, it's funny because the only team that UT or that Utah Valley has lost to the Wolverines. Pretty sweet name. The only wow. team they've lost to. Since February 10th has been UT Arlington. Hmm. Uh, maybe kind of makes you think. Well, I, well, it makes me want to take multiple long shots here. Utah Valley's fifty to one. Hmm. Do we take a little Utah Valley? A little UT. They played Arlington? much better down the stretch too. Well, there. Uh, so the way the brackets laid out, if you're not looking at it again, it's it's uh, buys on buys on buys. But UT Arlington's the three seed. So they're on the south side, as Colby would say. Uh, Utah Valley's on the north side. They would run into Seattle, then Grand Canyon. I, I think we take a little piece of Utah Valley, fifty to one. I see uh, Aveda in the chat also shouting out Utah Valley. Really? Uh, they're hot. They've lost one game since February tenth. I, I, I all right, you talking me into it? Fifty to one. I think in this kind of uh, arrangement, so I, I'll take. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Colby, even though I thought Colby was gonna like Tarleton State. I'm pretty sure he told us Tarleton State was a nice. That was before it. that news, man. I think that's a distraction, man. All right, so give me UT Arlington at eight to one. Give me uh, Utah Valley at fifty to one. Yeah, la- last and I just looked at last year. Grand Canyon won the conference twenty last year as a little bit more of a long shot. They were 13, 13 to one. All right, so final answer, Sean. You're on Tarleton and Utah Valley. You, you, yeah, you, uh, you talk me into it. I mean, it's it's fifty to one. Come on. I'm and uh, Colby just single shot on Arlington. Yep. All right, first round. We're heading to the Orleans, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, where Sean actually, and I will be. I, actually, oh, sprinkle me a little bit on Tarleton too. Fuck it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, Sean and I will also be in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, this Friday. For Sports Gambling Veasan. Podcast live on Veasan, 6 p.m. on the West Coast, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, two hours. Colby will join us. We'll talk some college basketball. I'm sure we'll talk some NFL too. Maybe we'll get dressed up. Certainly play some sports betting blackjack. 6 p.m. on the West Coast, Wednesday, March 13th. Whack first round. Cal Baptist taking on Utah Valley, the five eight matchup. Utah Valley laying only four here. Love this. Utah Valley playing good ball right now. They're hot. Sean, do you get up from a hot table? No, no. Lay Especially the not in Vegas. Lay uh, the I'm on, I'm on UNLV. I'm on Utah Valley. Although UTV well, does seem like it could also be one of those weird uh, infections you get. Well, you got to get checked for UTV, yeah. uh, especially in Las Vegas. That's yeah, the, that's after, the irony. After Las UTV, Vegas, UTV you could pick up, uh, you could pick up some UTV in uh, Vegas if you're not careful. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a good matchup for wash Utah your Valley. hands. Wash your hands. Now I know, yeah, they beat Cal Baptist both times. They got them. Let's go. Utah Valley by four. Line's Colby. a little short. Colby? Yeah, I'm on Valley too. We talked about the Mormon population, Vegas. You know, let's go. It's part of the handicap. <laughs> they do really own Vegas, which is uh comical for a lot of reasons. Yeah, that that's uh, it's a perfect example of iron ironic or irony. Abilene Christian, the seventh seed, taking on Stephen F. Austin, the sixth seed. 8 30 PM on the West Coast. Stephen F. Austin laying three. Colby? This, this game's awesome. Uh this game, they, these teams fucking hate each other. Like uh we I, I hit on uh Abilene against Stephen F. Austin. I want to say it was in maybe early February. 
They were like a 10 or 11 point dog. They were down by 20 the whole game. They come back, they win on the buzzer beater, get their first lead of the game at the buzzer. Uh, that, that's just a little bit. I mean, last time they played was 63 62. The game before that, overtime. The game before that, double overtime. Uh, 2021, two point buzzer beater. You can go all the way back to to the you know uh, the team that beat Shaka Smart and ruined his Texas career. They uh, barely got by Stephen F. Austin, sixty three, sixty one. There in the tournament, uh, they hate each other. But I, I think the Lumberjacks are the play. They they gave up that twenty point lead uh, to Abilene at home. I think they've wanted this one. They've circled this one. They feel like they're the better team. Blood in the water. I'm going to take the Lumberjacks to get it done. This Abilene Christian team, they they're all their only losses since February tenth. Have been to Utah Valley twice. <laughs> They're hot. Can I add them to the futures portfolio? Give me some Abilene Christian at sixty to one. Also, Mike in the chat saying NFL slots. LOL. I didn't know they existed. What you must, Mike? You must be new what to the, the show. We love shit. NFL slots. Where are you been, man? <laughs> What's going on? I, uh, yeah. Stephen F. Austin all day. I, I, I'm with what? you. I'm taking Abilene. Christian. Oh, you are. Okay. They're hot. Uh, I'm against wrong that. game to be hot in, buddy. You don't get you don't get up. That's a, a rivalry game. No, to Kobe's point, this is a rivalry game. Stephen F. Austin owes them. I see Kramer adding ABC Abilene uh, Christian I'm, sixty to one. I'm adding a piece of the future here, sixty to one. Um, ah, just what what's not to love here? They're hot. You don't get hot from a hot table. All right, whack. Anything else to add to the to the whack? Final. Nope. That's going it. once, going twice. Final conference of the night and final uh, multi conference episode. Uh, g- gotta love this time of year. A 10, 10, 10 conference tournaments, Sean, starting less than 12 hours from right now. Big West, it's here. It's officially the conferences of nothing but Cal State and UC games. Uh, and then Hawaii. Hawaii Matador. Hawaii, Hawaii is in there too. Shout out uh, real quick uh, to Toasty. Uh, yeah. I love our boy Toasty up in Alaska, drinking myself oh, to sleep with the Zags loss. He's a big Zags fan. Oh, you know. Been he's the man. Of the program for a long time. Yeah, yeah. he's the man. Yeah. Send him some lighters back in the day. Don't uh, worry, the uh, Zags lost so they could win in March. Toasty, let's go. So yeah, they they you will be. You in. don't need that stupid uh, that stupid conference tournament title. Mark had a fuse. You guys have had your day. Uh, get ready for the tourney. I mean, the fact that they're coming in with no hype, no pressure. This might actually be in a weird way the Zags formula to get it done, right, Colby? Am I crazy? Yeah, I mean, I actually kind of like them losing here as long as they get in. You know, I think yeah. they're they've solidified them getting in too. So, uh, I think yeah, they're I think they're in. Yeah, I think they uh, are. My, too. my model has them in. All right, Big West is being played in beautiful. I, you know, I I lied with the location here. It's actually uh, Henderson, Nevada. The this is a fail. Let's talk about this. The Dollar Loan Center. Uh, who, by the way, if you if you wondered, uh, home to the Henderson Silver Knights of the American Hockey League, uh, the Vegas Nighthawks of the Indoor Football League. Why don't we cover that? That league, Sean. They the, should the, play this hold, in Hawaii. Hold on. The NBA G League Ignite, uh, which so they do play basketball here, and the Vegas Thrill. Who um, I'm not sure what the PVF is. Uh, I'm gonna click. Pro Volleyball Federation. Okay, oh, wow. so interesting. They uh, this is uh definitely on the smaller side. Uh, as Colby was trying to crowbar in, Hawaii is in this conference. How do they not all generate a trip to Hawaii to play well, their conference? It's tournament? so stupid. And then like Hawaii is at such a, a handicap. You would think you could be. It'd be like, hey, we'll do our conference tournament in Hawaii to help yeah. you. Uh, and we all get to go to Hawaii. Big fail. Big time fail. Well, There's too many tournaments worse. in Vegas. Yeah. It gets worse. I will say there are lots of ho- the one benefit to doing Vegas as the uh, compared to any of these other cities really. Vegas has enough hotels. Yeah. You got to give it to Vegas. You're, you know, oh, you Hawaii Vegas, has hotels, man. It's just a uh, little more expensive. I, no, they don't have fewer, hotels. Ho- fewer hotels. <laughs> you can hang even. out at my buddy's Justin's place. Yeah, they got a lot crash. of Airbnbs. All right, uh, style. Well, they use also all these West Coast conferences use the the, the West Coast conference style. So we got buys uh, into the semis for the top seeds. UC Irvine and UC Davis, and then well, you know, well, let, hold on, let's talk about that. It should be UC San Diego. They're the two seed, but since UC San Diego jumped up, 
they are not eligible to go to the NCAA tournament and play in this. Uh, so uh, they don't uh, even let them play in the the. No. Uh, so so you see well, San Diego. In some yeah. ways, though, if you're not eligible to win, why the fuck would they put you in the tournament? But like, Sean, that's also annoying. Th- they're they're saying you just came up from a small. No, no, I agree with that. That's stupid. That you sh- that it's stupid to not let them win. Or but if you're gonna not let them win, yeah, letting them play in the tournament is is, is also even, yeah, dumb. Because then you're letting a loser in. I yeah. I agree with that angle. Like <laughs> I, I I one, they should let them in. Who gives a fuck? That's stupid. But yeah. if they're not going to let them win the tournament, then why would you let them play the well, tournament? Well, especially nowadays where the conference is going to make money off how the team does in March. Yeah. So yeah. why would you not want to send your best team? Uh, very silly stuff. Uh, all archaic old white guy. Uh, w- back when they used to wear the wing wigs and uh, rabble, rabble, rabble. Cal <laughs> State, uh, Bakersfield, the eight seed is 60 to 1, along with uh, Sean, your matadors. Of Northridge, the seventh seed. No Four, respect for the forty Northridge. to one for Riverside. You see Riverside, the five seed. You see Santa Barbara, the Gauchos, six seed, plus uh, twenty five hundred. Heard the uh, heard from my uh, oldest daughter some very scary words. I'd like to go check out the Santa Barbara campus, Dad. Like, oh <laughs> fuck! Long Beach <laughs> State, the four seed, thirteen to one. Hawaii, the three seed, plus seven fifty. UC Davis, the two seed plus four twenty. UC Irvine, minus one ninety five for the Ant Eaters. You got a take here, Colby? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is another one of those silly ass brackets. So I think uh, you, I think you know, you, Irvine's value is not there. Davis is not good. Um, I think your best play. Would be Long Beach State just fired their coach. Uh, uh, give me Santa Barbara or uh, give me Santa Barbara and Riverside. Both those teams, uh, Riverside's played better the second half of the season. Santa Barbara, I know it, it, their season, they've been kind of a, uh, there's, I thought they would be contenders to win this conference. I don't know what the fuck went wrong with them, but they have some guys that have been part of that winning D- DNA over the years here. Josh Pierre Louis, a uh, kid from New Jersey, a guard that averages 12 points a game there for him. He is a, uh, he's a stud. If they get him going and AJ Mitchell, I think their chances is as good as any, for some reason they've had struggles this year. I don't understand why, but I think as far as a talent perspective goes them and even long beach state, which I'm not going to take a future on, but long beach and Santa Barbara have a more talented roster to me than Irvine. They just don't Irvine's culture is better. Um, but <laughs> it's just funny of thinking of Irvine having culture. Um, just yeah, so you want to talk of, about a lot of Ikea's and shopping centers you go down to Irvine. I was going to say parked money in real estate condos that are empty. That, that, that's what, that's what it is. So it, look, if you want to grab both sides of the bracket there, um, so you got UCSB, what? you got Santa Barbara and then what do you got on the other side? Colby, you're doing uh no, I think, I think to me, like just the two teams that are playing better, I'll take a shot on, on Riverside just cause I think Riverside is playing better in the second half of the season, but I don't know. It's tough because I feel like Irvine's better than everybody. So you, you know, long beach state, they fired their coach. He's going to coach the rest of the year. Maybe they get up for him. Maybe there's a tragic magic scenario there, but that's weird. Santa Barbara to me has the roster. They haven't put it together all year. Maybe they can put it together because they're way more athletic than Irvine. I think that they just, they need to, they need to put. They need Dude, to stop Santa, fucking around. Santa Barbara's uh, Santa Barbara's always sneaky good. I I feel like when I uh, not uh, not having watched a, a ton this year, uh, they stood out to me immediately. But uh, you know when when I when you look at these conferences, you sometimes just got to take the hot. Again, you don't get up from the hot table. Why why are we not taking a team like Hawaii? They're bot. They won't have the body clock disadvantage like they typically do when they have to go play a, a random road game. Most They've been horrible bat- on the road, though, man. But that's my point. It, you're taking that disadvantage away by saying, "Okay, you've ha- you haven't played since Saturday. You've you've probably thought about how you're going to travel here. You're not. It's not a typical road they, spot." They do say Vegas is what the ninth island or something. There's some quote. I feel like yep. all these. There's yeah. I'm taking I'm taking UC Davis because I like uh, I like getting some shots here to take down Irvine. I'm not going to lay minus one ninety five. So I think the the I think Irvine is the buzzsaw. They're going to eat up those ants like they're like they're uh, you know they're going to be 
Can we, uh, Jake, if you're still listening to the show at this point, can we get a Photoshop <laughs> of instead of Ozzy Osbourne? And maybe this is an AI thing, Photoshop or AI. But instead of Ozzy Osbourne doing a line of ants, it's the UC uh, Irvine oh. Ant Eater doing a line of ants with uh, with Ozzy Osbourne. That would be if I went to Irvine, I'd make some pretty badass T-shirts. Has, now, o- has Ozzy done a line of ants before? Oh, you don't know that story? That was yeah. like the that was like the all time story. It's like me and the mates are just sitting there blowing lines, and then they see these lads, little dinky dinky dink, go to a little spill <laughs> soda. I just pulled out the straw and said, Fine, I'll do a line of ants. So that was my Ozzy. All uh, right. You know. And obviously taking the Matador. Imagine hocking that loogie. Matador <laughs> 60 to 1. Don't let the Matadors get hot. I know they've cooled off as of late, but they were playing some pretty good basketball. They got quality wins under their belt. Uh, and just hoping they kind of uh, get that magic that they had earlier on in the middle of the season, like middle of December, uh, they were playing good, man. Qu- they beat UCLA at UCLA. What more do you need to know? And right. they beat they beat uh, they beat Santa Barbara, who they're playing uh, in the first game. They beat Cal State Fullerton. Uh, they, you know, no, they that's lost a great to two by Hawaii. Like they're not they're. They're not for a sixty to one shot. I got a, I got a plan for you, Sean. You they got to win four games. Come you, on. You take Northridge. You take Santa Barbara. You take Hawaii. Or you like Davis? You take Davis. You take Hawaii. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're Santa Barbara and CSUN. You're one of those up. teams. You're is locked gonna... up. I'm taking. Give me Santa Barbara. Because I I feel like the Gauchos are always ready to get hot. And give me. I'll, I'm gonna stick in the same side of the bracket. Give me Hawaii. Plus so, seven fifty. So Ryan, you got Hawaii and what else? Santa Barbara. Okay. I'm Gauchos Gaucho, would be fun. I feel like they've made it in the tourney a bunch if they get in. But they gotta beat CSUN first, which they won't win. I I can't wait to watch Sean watch this game. When is this game? Tomorrow. It, tomorrow. Eight thirty PM. Oh, Tomorrow's while, a huge fucking while, game. While we're we got, doing the show. We got we got Syracuse. We got Lehigh. We got <laughs> Cal State Northridge. Uh, you know what? I've been saying this for weeks. There's ten fucking conference tournaments starting tomorrow. It's I, out of control. All my teams in one day. All right. Wife's gonna be out of town. Oh wow. It's gonna be locked Lucky in. Lucky you. All right. Uh quickly, Henderson, Nevada, six PM on the West Coast. Cal State, Bakersfield, the eight seed, UC Riverside, the five seed. Riverside laying two and a half. Bakersfield is is a special kind of ass. That that's the handicap. I I think uh, I think I'll probably lay the points in the Big West. Yeah, um, Bakersfield's improved this year, but Riverside has been a lot better the second half of the season. They They've lost a ton of they lost a ton of production a year ago. Um, and, and that's really why they struggled out the gate. But uh, Mag Paeo, I think his name is the coach. Um, he has done a good job uh, getting this team in shape for this run. So I'm going to take Riverside minus two and a half. I took a future on them for that reason is they played a lot better the second half of the season. They beat Irvine. So you know what? let's add, uh, add Riverside to my portfolio. <laughs> I'm getting them in there. I got them in there already. Sean, we're I'm really liking the way my portfolio is shaping out here. Lay lay it for me as well. Riverside minus two. I'm with you guys. Uh, you were making a decent case for UCR, but again, I'm a I'm a I'm a Matador man through and through. Not gonna not gonna get a Benedict with some UC Riverside chat, but uh, I like them in this spot. Bakersfield is, was Riverside this your is big way rival? Too, way too short. Was was that the big rival that you hated the most when you used to go to oh, the games? Yeah. Just used to paint our faces, <laughs> storm the fe- storm the court. Uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll never, I'll, uh, to me, whenever I think about Cal state and you say matador, I think of that whip on the wall, <laughs> Cal state Northridge, the seventh seed. Do we show, do we, did I, I told that story. I feel like we've alluded to it or spoken about Call it. Me, did I ever tell the story about my roommate and the whip? I, I don't remember that. I don't know that I well, want you know to what? hear that either. Um, uh, well, I think you should save it for tomorrow's show right, while we're watching in. Cal State tease. Northridge. It's a good tease. Play Santa Barbara at eight thirty p.m. on the West Coast. Northridge. Joe in the chat pointed out Kramer has four teams. What do you mean? Oh, I have three teams. Yeah, three teams. Hawaii, mm-hmm. UCSB, and you. UC, I, I did not take Northridge. Um. All right, Cal State Northridge taking on UCSB, the Gauchos. Six they just seed. beat the Gauchos. You, Santa on. Barbara laying the three. I I will say, Sean, the one part of you what you should be saying. Yes. 
and my, and my favorite way to attack a this team has a long shot chance to win a conference. Northridge plays with the most tempo in the conference. Sometimes but control you, the game. <laughs> can you count on Northridge people to go to Vegas and stay sober? See, I see Santa Barbara being laid back. Santa Barbara's <laughs> going to be they'll probably be staying at Club Fortune Casino there. You know, uh just laid back well, there in they, Henderson. They, they, uh, you know, UCSB, they got all that, that gaucho money. They're probably going to be uh, passed out at the day. Uh, they're probably the people who rent the uh, little uh, cabana and, and they have some drinks and all of a sudden they pass out Northridge. We're shotgun at four loco. We're doing <laughs> key bumps in the bathroom. We're, we're fighting uh, pit bosses at $5 roulette tables. That's the Northridge way. Well, that's why you'll be asked when you go to play this game. And that oh, is why Santa on. Barbara oh. get, no, get, gets it done. The, the student athletes of Northridge so are going to be locked in right across the street from the dollar loan center is the beautiful green Valley ranch. Hmm. I don't think this is the type of place to see sun. A graduate would go, but uh, UC, UCSB, you. a nice, a nice, nice university up on the sea. I could see that. Lay the points, Santa Barbara. Sorry, Sean. Col- I, I'm, I'm rooting for you though. Colby, are you taking the gachos? Uh, yeah, it's my future, man. It's been fun, see, son. Uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's not a bright future, buddy. I love it's a hey, dead you got end street. You, gr- Andy Newman, great first year. I love LA, and uh, let's go. I love when Colby says it's my future. <laughs> uh, well, it's your future until you decide to change the other team. Yeah, stay tuned for the real picks uh, coming up at the college basketball experience, and make sure you sign up over at hofbets.com. Use the promo code SGPN. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app. The March Madness product is coming, uh, but uh, for now, just stick to some optimized NBA parlays, soccer parlays, whatever it is. They help you optimize it again. As a guy who does a bunch of research for gambling shit, they save you at the very <laughs> least a bunch of time. Uh, HOFBets.com, promo code SGPN. Download the app and get started today. Uh, we're seeing four locks in the dog, Kramer. Is that what the official uh, card is? I, I, uh, I, I, I suggested it because we, we have so many fucking games. I think we have like 20 games. So I figured four locks would be more appropriate. All right. Best Lo- bets for March 13th. What do you got? All right. Lock number one. Uh, give me. I feel like I'm gonna be uh, playing a couple of these. Uh, yeah, let's go Big Twelve. Uh, TCU laying two and a half. Lock number one. Lock number two. Let's go uh, Texas laying four and a half. Horns down and up, both at the same time. Uh, we're also gonna head over. Oh man, some of these. Some of these are. I, I'm looking around, making sure I got a dog. Okay, let's let's pencil in my. Uh, <laughs> we picked like 30 games, right? UCF is my dog on the money line against BYU. I like them, they're hot right now. Uh, continuing on my lock parade, I'm going to take Utah Valley laying the four against Cal Baptist. Utah Valley hot right now. I do like that. Also like that 50 to one future on them to win the whack. And uh, last one. UC Riverside, again, uh, lo- love this spot. Easy advancing into the next round. Love the future as well at forty to one to win the Big West. TCU minus two and a half. Texas minus four and a half. UTV Utah Valley minus four, and UC Riverside minus two and a half. Not many dogs there, Sean. No. And my money line dog UCF on the money line. First lock, you know what it is. Lehigh plus seven all day with that. Let's go. Uh, next lock. Hmm. A lot to, it's a lot to like here. Uh, Texas Southern. They win this conference all the time. They're only laying a point to Jackson State. Uh, I think that line's a bit off. It, it's not factoring in their experience and uh, really feel good about them getting it done. Uh, I'm gonna steal Kramer's Utah Valley minus four. I'm good pick. Sign that good one. Pick. That feels pretty good. Oh man, interesting of the of the uh, high profile games. There's some interesting ones here. I noticed Kramer didn't lock up Virginia Tech. No Maybe need to do anything. Scared? 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 No, no, not scared. Just don't don't need that shit in my life right now. 
Uh, Texas. It's bad enough they put it in the morning. I'm gonna be. Watching. I'll also put Texas minus four and a half. Nice. Uh, Max A. Smith is nice. just a fun, fun guy to root for as well. Yep. For my money line dog. Hopefully you took a dog or two. Oh, I did. I like Bethune uh, Cookman. I'm with Colby on that. Uh, come uh, on, dude. just take scroll down to the bottom. And I like do Kansas. It. Just, just take. Uh, scra- grab, uh, grab your pointy thing and and go try to kill a bull. Horns up for the Matadors. Let's go, CSUN on the money line. And uh, I already uh, bet it over on Cut. I saw some of the guys getting the uh, opposite action. Worst of luck, losers. Can we Hopefully get you use a the promo code SGPN? <laughs> can we get you a Matador outfit? Oh, you, uh, you can if they the, make it to the tournament, I'll wear a Matador <laughs> outfit. Do some, do some bull, some bull <laughs> fighting. All right, Colby, what do you got? Uh, we're locking up the likes of UC Santa Barbara. Have fun, Matadors. All right. Uh, we're oh, also wow, Colby. I like we're also stream, Kramer. We're I also like locking this. Utah Valley. Um, Valley's going to take down Cal Baptist. The dog. I mean, let's do a parlay: Kansas and Bethune. Let's go. Bethune's got more value. Put Bethune wow. down, but the parlay should be Kansas, Bethune, and no, maybe you you even throw in uh, Lehigh. We need two Ooh. more locks from you, Colby. So what do you want? What do you want for the what your your one dog? What do you want for your dog? But I like those parlays as well. Uh, Bethune. Okay, Bethune Cookman. And then two more locks. Let's go Lehigh plus seven. Let's go. Oh, and one more lock. Uh, we're going Stephen F. Austin. Oh wow, he went to all the crappy games. He found no. All- he he was ta- he just was talking about Lehigh. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, we're saying All right, the same so thing. So parlay, we got Bethune, Cookman, Kansas, and Lehigh. I love that parlay. Mm, we're gonna be so rich, and and Kramer's gonna be sitting over no, there. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing that shit. That's a Sean and Colby special. I'm not doing that shit. Hey, uh, I'll. T- you know what? You want a par? You want a winning parlay? Sure. We're gonna do a t- a Texas three step. Okay. Texas State, Texas, and what else? Oh, Texas. No, Southern, there's no Texas Russell. State. Oh, sorry, it's Texas. Yeah, we can't Southern. do yeah. Texas Southern though, because it's not till Thursday. I don't think the number will be out. If if you can get Texas Southern in there with Texas and TCU, go for it. If not, just go Texas TCU. All right. Kramer's on Texas and TCU. And uh, hey, we'll see you tomorrow night. More college basketball picks. Make sure you smash. Toss us a nice rating review over on Apple Podcasts. Use that promo code MADNESS, 15% off everything. Uh, check out the college basketball experience. Uh, DGen University applications are open. DGen.university. Why should you join the great DGen University? We want to hear from you guys for that. And uh, yeah, Madness is here. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green. He's Ryan. It really is going to be like the Peace Corps. Kramer, let it <laughs> ride.